you know, I always encourage people to download my videos, share my videos. I don't mind if you make money, like advertising, etc. That's not, not the problem for me. All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends, and soon we will be live on air with uh, uh, our friend, the Apostate Prophet. I think many of you know him already, and uh, actually he is with me. And uh, like we made the, the call, but we did not talk yet, uh, just to wish to test the sound. So he will be live on air soon, and we will start. Please invite your friends. <clears throat> And let us do the good work for today. Uh, I made a, a video before this one a few minutes ago, and uh, I don't know how many of you heard it, you know, uh, about the cockroaches attacking Mecca, which is uh, obviously... Hello, everyone, and welcome. <laughs> this is the Apostate Prophet. I think it's on here. I hope everyone can hear me well. We have just started our live chat. Please, can, we, can everyone give me a little check if everything is okay, if it's if, if it's working or not. If everyone tells me that uh, the live chat is working, if everyone tells me that they can hear me, I will immediately start with the program. Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. I hope everyone we have okay, just... Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful. So, uh, as, as some of you might know, I've had some uh, recent health issues, some recent problems. Uh, I've had an anxiety problem, a little anxiety disorder that I developed on the uh, in, in the recent days. That's why I made a little stop with my whole uh, videos, with my uh, with my live chats, with everything. I also canceled all the video live chats that I made with everyone else. But uh, since I set up this live chat with Christian Prince before, and since uh, and since he doesn't show his face. Um, we decided to just make this an audio call, so there is no problem with this at all. We can just go ahead. He will be talking most of the time anyway. I will take questions from all of you. Uh, you will not be able to see me in this one. As I said, it is, a, it is an audio live chat. And uh, that's all. And when, if everyone is ready, I will just go ahead and introduce Christian Prince immediately. Christian Prince uh, has his own uh, YouTube channel called The Arabian Prophet. Uh, I told I talked about it before. He makes great work. He debates Muslims' life on his channel. He has a lot of knowledge on Islam. A, a lot of knowledge on Islam. I'm saying this really meaning it. Uh, he has a degree in Islamic law and civil law. Um, he has published books on Islam. He has made so many studies on Islam. And uh, very often, whenever he uh, debates Muslims, we see very often that he basically wins the debates, what we call winning. Uh, without going any further, let me just start talking to him right away. Hello, Christian Prince. How are you? Hey, my friend. I'm fine. Thank you very much for having me in your uh, channel. And uh, we appreciate uh, having you too. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, can you tell me if I introduced you correctly? Is, is there anything you want to add about yourself? You have a degree in Islamic law and civil law. You have studied Islam very much. You speak Arabic and so on. Do you want to uh, add anything to that? Uh, I will leave the rest uh, of the career to the Muslims to tell us what they think about me, and then we will see. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. N nice introduction. Yeah. So... Um, Many of you have asked me uh, so often to invite Christian Prince on my channel. Finally, he's here. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. The first thing I would like to talk about uh, with you, Christian Prince, uh, how open are you about your, your privacy? Uh, do you, uh, would you like to tell us more about uh, where you exactly come from, like country-wise or region-wise, how, how you acquired your, uh, your knowledge, your, your scholarship, your, uh, your information on Islam and otherwise? Well, I'm a Middle Eastern, for sure, which means they call me Arab, and Arabic is my first language. 
and I have uh, my uh, degree in Islamic uh, law, but uh, my knowledge has nothing to do really with my degree because in Islamic universities, uh, they teach you nothing about what Islam is about. They teach you only what they want you to learn. Um, so most of the knowledge I earned, it's my own work and on my own study. Um, same time, uh, I don't really share much about information about myself because uh, I like privacy. It's not because, you know, anything else. I mean, I just, I like, I like to be, I, I'm a private person, you know. Um, I like freedom. The second you are uh, a person who is, uh, let us say, a public face, then wherever you go, even like you will have either people who like you or people who hate you. So I prefer to stay away from both who like me and who hate me and enjoy life better. I can I can very much understand that. I can very much deal with that. Well, I, as you may, as you might see, uh, I chose a quite different uh, <laughs> approach to the public. I just made myself completely public, although I'm a I'm an ex-Muslim. Mm -hmm. I show my face and so on. But I see very much why you would choose to be private because now that I show my face, I show my name and so on. Uh, it is it is really unbelievable how much uh, how much abuse, how much insults, how much private investigations into my life take place because I criticize Islam. Why do you think is that? Why do you think Islam is the only religion that we can't properly criticize without getting so much backlash, without getting so much hate, so much uh, you know persecution from the believers? Why is Islam the only religion that has this big problem? You know, Muhammad, he said, I've been victorious by terror. And terror have many faces. They try to intimidate you. You know, uh, even when you debate Muslims, uh, you don't notice a debate. You notice an intimidation process. They try to intimidate you, make a mockery of you, uh, make you feel that you are not safe, not secure. So you might lose and maybe they can shut you up. So the whole, the whole idea is if I can scare you, then uh, you lost. And uh, this is why Muhammad, he... He focused on terrorism because terrorism is the way to win fast. You do not need to debate with anyone. You just put a sword in the neck of the person and you convert. So there is no need for uh, debate. There is no need for who's, who's right, who's wrong. The, the one who is uh, in charge of terror is the one who should win. But, you know, those things are not working anymore. Uh, so the Muslim, they try maybe to harass you as a person, try to put you down, try to speak about you in a, like or creating stories about you hoping that nobody will take you into consideration no more. And uh, they will not, like, you will lose your credit. So even they, they, will, they will be willing to uh, fabricate the stories about you. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. <clears throat> Just in order to make you look bad. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, they tell, they tell you even things like, uh, you know, when, if you are a former Muslim, they tell you stuff like you were never a real Muslim to begin with. Uh, you have no credentials, this and that. No one will believe you, and so on. If you are, if you never were a Muslim, but if you start criticizing Islam, then they say, "Oh, you have a completely, you know, uh, evil agenda, a vile agenda against Islam," and 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 so on and so forth. And the only thing we actually do is just criticize Islam. The funny thing is, uh, I bring this up very often. Uh, we see so many critics of Christianity online. There are probably so many. Uh, critics of Christianity online so much more than there are critics of, of Islam online. And yet uh, yet we have this great problem with, uh, with criticizing Islam. But I want to go back to something you just said at the very beginning, which is that you acquired most of your knowledge about Islam from uh, by yourself, not from Islamic education. I would say, as a former Muslim, I totally agree with that. You know, like Muslims tell me nowadays, Muslim apologists tell me nowadays very often that um, that I don't have any degree in any Islamic field, which is why I shouldn't be trusted as an expert on Islam. But the thing is, I educated myself on Islam very much, and you, and you did the same. But, and and we, do, we do this for a reason, because I grew up in Islam, and most things I learned about Islam are positive things about Islam. No one told me extensively about Aisha's age, about uh, how the marriage st stuff really works, about how divorce really works, about how wife beating really works about uh, all the hadith concerning, you know, cursing the disbelievers, cursing the Jews and the Christians, uh, fighting all the people until everyone agrees that Allah is the only God and that Muhammad is his only messenger and so on. Uh, what is your observation when you bring up these points uh, on your channel, on other uh, platforms to Muslims? Do you... 
what what do you what do you see coming from the Muslim side? Do you see more of an apologist approach to that? Do you see denial? What can you say about that with your experience? Muslims for me is like a like a kid who he thought that his toy is the best, and he uh, he was worshiping it for long. And then when you show him how stupid it is, the toy he have in his hand, he start calling you names and screaming and even threatening you. Uh, but sooner or later, they notice that their toy is, is stupid. As an example, I'm just talking to you now, and a Muslim, he challenged me to read chapter 3, verse number 61, which is one of the most funny verses in the Quran. And uh, this is how funny they are. How you are a Muslim, and you say to me, read this verse. Here you see the Christians, uh, they are debating Muhammad, and they ask Muhammad to come into debate. And the, the Christian, they have knowledge. This is why the Quran called them people of the book. And the Quran never called the Muslims people of the book even though they claim that they have one but the funny they don't they are not called in their own book people of the book so in chapter uh, 3 verse number 61 muhammad because he have a disability the same disability we see today from the muslims who claim to have knowledge he said to the christians come bring your family bring your women i bring my women bring your children i bring my children bring your, your you know yourself and bring myself and let us invoke the one uh, inv invoke the curse of allah and those who they are lying and here you will notice that if a Muslim is not mature in his the way of thinking, I don't blame him because he is following a prophet who is not mature in his thinking. If somebody want to debate you, what kind of debate this is to say to him, bring your wife and I bring my wives, bring your children and I bring my children and let us have a cursing party and let us curse the one who is lying. Here you will notice that Muhammad is giving us a great example of the low IQ and not being mature as an adult because if somebody want to debate you I mean why Muslim don't do why don't do the practice the, the debate of Muhammad they, based on this I will take the microphone I will say to you say to in front let us say you are still Muslim and I am a Christian I say uh, I swear by Allah I invoke a, a curse of Allah to cut my nose if I am lying and then you take the microphone you say may Allah make a car go over me if I am lying and then I take the mic again and I say, may Allah uh, close the door of the van over my fingers if I'm lying. I mean, this is the most stupid debate ever. So invoke the curse of Allah on those who they are lying. But who said that they are lying? You see, if somebody he is a Buddha and he is debating me about his God, he is not lying for he is. He believes in that. Yes, for me, what he believes in is a lie, but he himself is not a liar. So here Muhammad is giving us. A, a clear uh, uh, reception or let us say presentation of himself he is a person who feel guilty and he feel he knew that he's a liar so he want to invoke curse on the line to prove that he is not a liar it's the same as someone you know uh, working in prostitution she want to take an oath that she is not a prostitute even though there's nobody accuse her to be a prostitute yet but because she knew what she have and she knew what she is so she want to invoke curse on the one so that will make you believe that she is not what you think and here we see that Muslims are the same. The Muslims, they cannot debate us, so they invoke curse. I hope I did answer you, based on the Quran. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So we learn this, you know, this is how we learn about Islam. Islam is not, is not, something, is not something legitimate, first of all. There's no legitimacy in this, in this cult, and there's no rules. The rules is just a, a collection of rules. Muhammad, he put it together, and the Muslims are, themselves are confused which one to follow. And which one is not to follow because they, they keep saying there's a, this one is abrogated this one is not abrogated uh, it's a madness so islam is not really something you can learn in a school in a school everybody praise allah everybody praise muhammad that's it anything else is not there in the school you can ask questions about silly stuff as an example you can ask can i shave my underarm then you will see how many volunteers they will answer you but the second you question who is allah they will kick you out from the school you know so mm -hmm. the, when the question is silly everybody want to answer you when the question is serious you will you will suffer wonderful wonderful a very sophisticated answer actually uh, I would like to get in, get with you into into some of those <laughs> lies that uh, you know that we call lies that Muslim apologists tell us nowadays I think uh, I wouldn't say that everyone lies to us. I would say that so many that many of those that many uh, Muslim believers tell us things that are lies while completely believing that they are true. One of those examples, for example, is that uh, is that 
the Bible and the Torah, or you know, the Bible altogether, the, Jew, the Jewish and the Christian scripture, were completely falsified, and therefore that somehow is a justification for Islam to be uh, a superior, to be the only true religion. When you get into further talks with that, you see that uh, that many Muslims don't actually have any defensive standpoints on that. I mean, they don't actually have. Uh, any well substantiated points that, that they can use in that argument to make their argument in any way stronger. What would you say to those Muslims who claim that the scripture of the Christians and Jews were falsified by Christians and Jews and that Islam was necessary because Islam brought everyone the right answer? What is your main argument against that point? Actually, this is a wonderful, wonderful accusation because this accusation is going to be against Islam, not against us. Remember, the Muslim believe that the Quran. Uh, uh, the Quran confirmed that the one who sent the Injil and the Torah is Allah and if the Muslim is saying to me that the Injil of Allah is corrupt so what's my problem obviously he is shooting himself in the foot he is saying to me I have a funny God his name is Allah he keeps sending books but he cannot keep even one copy of them to be accurate and here we notice that the Muslim the second you say that to him he switched from attacking the Bible to change the topic he will not talk about attack uh, the Bible is corrupt no more because uh, this is not an answer he was waiting for. He's, uh, he's waiting for you to say, oh, no, we have many uh, manuscripts, etc. No, don't do that. Don't waste your time. Let the Muslim say that 1,000 times because by saying that, who in the world want to follow our God? He sent 124,000 prophet, and only one prophet, they claim that his book is preserved. I mean, that is the most stupid God ever because uh, imagine I, if I hire Allah to work in a library, a librarian, and then I say to Allah, I will give you this library, and it's full of 124,000 books. And then after uh, a thousand years, I come back, and I found in the shelf there's only one book. So who is the stupid here? Me or the God who could not preserve his own book? Because remember, those are not his my, my books. You see, when a, when, a, when, when a Muslim, he says to me, your Bible, I mean, I don't have a Bible. This is the book of God, supposedly, right? It's, it's, not, yeah. it's not my book. So when you say to me your book, this is this is silly Actually, even the Quran itself calling us people of the book and here you will find another stupid issue How our book is corrupt, but yet you call our book. We, you call us people of the book It's like saying the guy he don't have camel, but the guy with the camel But we don't have a camel anymore. So why you call us people the people with the camel? You know what I mean? So <laughs> they don't have they, they don't have intelligence in the same time as long we can show tons of verses from the Quran speaking clearly that the the uh, uh, the the book which is given to the Christian supposedly uh, never been uh, never been corrupt because the Quran says it clearly uh, to confirm what is with them and as long you are confirming what is with them uh, then you know uh, that that's mean you are confirming what is with them and what is with them is the book the Torah and the gospel. So how you confirm what is with them, but yet the book is is is, is corrupt. Uh, you see, like as an example, chapter two, verse number eighty nine, chapter two, verse number ninety one, uh, uh, chapter two, verse one hundred one, chapter two, verse number th uh, two thirteen. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, you know, tons of verses saying it clearly that the Quran confirm what they have with them in their position, as we see. Actually, I'm showing it in my screen in my channel. So. The Quran confirm what is in their possession. So when the Muslim he says that he is speaking even against his Quran, speaking with knowledge, no knowledge except his stupidity, and being a fool. And okay, if you want to be a fool, be a fool. So when a Muslim he say that the Bible is corrupt, I advise the Christian not to say no. Say to him, thank you very much. Your God book is corrupt, and you will see how his face will change in a second. Same time, as long the Torah and the Bible is corrupt. How Muhammad he take an oath on uh, in the Torah as we see in this is Sahih Hadith. Muhammad he uh, uh, the Jews they ask him about uh, about an issue of adultery, and Muhammad he told them bring the Torah for me, and then he after they brought the Torah for him he placed the the, the cushion, uh, uh, you know the one he was sitting in, after he brought the Torah he said to them okay bring it. They brought it to it and he would draw the cushion from beneath of him and he placed the Torah saying I believe in thee and in the one who revealed thee here Muhammad actually not only confirming the Torah is not corrupt he is converting to Judaism and he is taking Shahada 
because when you say that you are a prophet of Allah and you are swearing by the book saying I believe in thee and that is the Torah and by the one who sent thee which is Jehovah that's when Muhammad here trying to make himself look like a Jew converting to Judaism officially and he did not take an oath by Allah because the one who sent the Torah is not Allah this is the Torah of the Jew this is not the Torah of Muhammad so here Muhammad he was trying to say he is a Jew trying to convince him that he is one of them in order to make the Jews support him but after a while when he noticed that the Jews will not believe him anyway he decided to flee and to try you know start killing them and because he, that's it he give up so everything the Muslim they speak uh, about when they speak about corruption it is for our benefit not for their benefit I have no problem if a Muslim says to me that the book of Allah is corrupt because well obviously your God is, is a shish kebab anyone can corrupt his book and the same happened for the Torah and the Quran you say it says the Quran that Allah he gave gave the Torah to the rabbis to protect the Torah but the rabbis did not protect it and this is you know and it says actually in here that Allah he entrusted the rabbi uh, so uh, Allah you know, Allah trusted the rabbi and uh, his his trust was a failure that's mean Allah cannot be God because when I, when I say I trust you uh, that's mean I made a decision of trust and that's mean there's no way you will not be trustworthy especially that the one who trusts uh, is God so obviously Allah cannot be God and uh, uh, okay, well, some, some of them say uh, some of them say about about the whole argument about the whole uh, you know that the Quran itself says that the, uh, that, the, that, the, that the books have been protected uh, many Muslims would say that uh, that this first that those verses don't refer to the to the Bible that they only refer to the Quran because uh, it is a new declaration in the Quran that's why uh, such a declaration that no one can change Allah's word that no one can change Allah's books uh, refers only to the Quran not to the Bible yeah but what we would do I'm then, sure you have heard that argument very often yeah but we, what we will do with the verses saying that we send a book confirming to what is with them. I mean confirming what is with them you know how you mm -hmm. confirm what is with them if what is with them is not confirmed you know I mean <laughs> yeah. it says yeah. lima ma'ahum. we confirm what is with them as simple as that so they cannot say we don't confirm it if Allah himself he confirm it same time let us say that the Allah he decided to protect only his book who is the silly here what kind of God he is silly he favor his some of his book over other books is that our problem if we go in the Quran as an example in chapter 5 verse number 44 in chapter 5, uh, 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 5 verse number 44 uh, uh, it says that Allah he entrusted the Jews uh, to, pro to protect and to preserve the scriptures okay when Allah he did that did he make the wrong decision because if I if I hand if I hand you a book and I say to you I trust you to protect it and then after some time I come back and I found that you did not protect the book now I'm going to blame who I'm going to blame the Jews or I will blame myself as God this is the Muslim translation in front of us on the screen it says it it was we who revealed the law which is the book of Moses therein was guidance and light by the standard have been judged the Jews uh, by the prophet who bowed as uh, between two bracket as an Islam uh, to Allah will by the rabbis and the doctor of the law for them was entrusted the protection of Allah book and he will notice that the Quran again making a stupid mistake because if Allah is the one who made a decision to to uh, uh, trust in the Jews to protect the book and the Muslim they say to us that Allah is all knowledgeable all knowing and he knew the future that's mean he shouldn't know that the Jews are not trustworthy and he should not give them such a job because at the end of the day this is his book so here when he said I trust you and the trust failed that's mean Allah he do not know the future that basically means that Allah made a mistake that the Almighty all-knowing Allah made a mistake in choosing the wrong people yes especially he said the trust you know because you see when you when you take your money to the bank why you don't take it to your neighbor you take it to the bank because you trust the bank you, you don't trust your neighbor right so mm -hmm. in the bank the, the the whole idea of banking that you trust that place because there is a guarantee from the government up to two hundred thousand dollars if the bank go bankruptcy the government will pay you back your money so we entrust the bank 
to give our money to the bank because the bank can get cannot get away with it so the trust here is established is confirmed now Allah when he say I entrusted the Jews in protection of the book and then the Muslim they say to us that the Jews they corrupt the book that's mean that the trust uh, decision of Allah was a big stupid mistake and Allah cannot be God because God he knew the future okay so to make a to make a little recap about the whole thing is that uh, as, as many Muslims know, even those who are watching right now and making nasty comments, <laughs> as, as many Muslims know, every Muslim learns from childhood, from uh, very early ages, that uh, the scripture of the Christians and the Jews were falsified by the Christians and the Jews, and that's why uh, Islam came down, the only true uh, religion came down, and uh, Allah protected his Quran forever, and it can never be changed. But uh, this argument also implies that Allah when he chose the Jews as his chosen people, as his chosen good people, when he chose them, that Allah made a mistake. Now, the the the, the average Muslim would say, no, it's not a mistake. It's just uh, a presentation so that every one of us can see that even the highest people, that even the most blessed people can make big mistakes and turn toward falsehood. But... Uh, that, that is not a really good argument because that really didn't have to happen. That would mean that Allah wasted everyone's time, that Allah wasted thousands of years, at least 3,000 of years, uh, trusting the wrong people on earth, trusting the Jews, when uh, in the end the Jews would turn away from Allah. That, that would really mean that Allah chose the wrong people. This either means that Allah can't make uh, good choices, that Allah makes wrong choices, that Allah trusts the wrong people, or this means that Allah de deliberately set this up and made his own chosen people, the Jews, uh, all go to hell and be condemned forever. There is no way out of this. This is not a rational argument. So uh, Muslims usually don't think about this because they just learn this as some kind of story, as some kind of backstory of Islam, and as some kind of justification against why uh, why, why the Jews and the Christians are wrong and, and, the, and, and Islam is eternally right and so on. But when you think further about the logic behind this, it either turns out that Allah is not really very smart, and he should be very smart because he's the almighty Allah, or that he uh, that he had a pretty evil plan for humankind that, that that no other person in this world in our time would morally agree with. So, really, when we talk about the whole thing about the the, the Bible being uh, you know corrupted by the Christians and the Jews, it, it is really not a fa not not a good argument in favor of Islam. It is it is a very big argument against Islam because it makes Islam look very very weak and it makes. Uh, the proposed God of Islam, Allah, look very either, um, you know, low intelligence or quite evil in his plans. But I think I think everyone got the point. I would like to uh, take some super chats here. Some people make, made some super chats. Thank you so much, Christian Prince. Um, there are some super chats by S. Larock, uh, who said, Christian Prince, you have so many great sound bites. I'd love to make Abdul t-shirts. Uh, others include Shut Up, Shut Up, Son of Budak, Got You Busted. That's for you. I think there's no question attached to that. Uh, another super chat by Mr. Mr. Werewolf Dude. By the way, if you don't want to attach questions to your super chats, uh, I would suggest you do that because don't waste a super chat. Make a super chat with a question so that we can come together and answer those questions. Someone else said, uh, Kaffir Linda Clark, thank you so much, Linda, for being here as always, said, Apostate Prophet and Christian Prince are a miracle hearing you both together. Hallelujah. Jill17 said, you are doing good work. AP, thank you so much, Jill17. Uh, and then here's a question among the Super Chats by James Berwick, who made a Super Chat and said, can you briefly explain the difference between Shia and Sunni? Thanks. I think this is a good opportunity for you, Christian Prince, to, uh, to talk a bit about the differences between Shia and Sunnis and to also use that point to explain us what went wrong with Islam and what went wrong with in the history of Islam? The question is, can you briefly explain the difference between Shia and Sunni? You have the microphone. Thank you. Well, uh, I don't see really uh, too much different. It's it is it's just about how uh, uh, who is going to be more crazy and more uh, you know uh, infected with the <laughs> virus. You know, it's like each one of them he have his own. It's like a one coin, uh, but have two faces. It's the same. 
And both of them, they are violence, by the way. But the Shia, their violence is different. Uh, they are smarter. They don't. They, play, they, play, they practice taqiyya more than the Sunni, a lot more. Uh, otherwise, all of them, they are the same. Both, they worship Muhammad. The difference is the Shia, they worship all the family of Muhammad. The Muslim Sunni, they worship Muhammad only. And they focus on him to be the star in the forehead of Allah. The Shia, they believe that there is all the family of Muhammad, Ali and Muhammad and uh, his daughter Fatima and her children, all of them, they are, they used to be, they are actually, they are not even a human, they are created from light. And the Sunni, somehow they believe in the same, but they have different approach. So both of them, uh, 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 they believe in the same thing. The All the fight is that the Sunni, they supported the ones who fought, uh, fought uh, Ali and his family. And the Shia, they, they are against anyone who fought Ali. So it is about uh, power because Islam is a religion of power. Seeking power is not about God. So Ali want to be Khalifa, uh, Uthman uh, want to be Khalifa, uh, uh, Omar want to be a Khalifa, Abu Bakr want to be a Khalifa. So all of them, they are fighting over power. And we see that right away from the early stage of Islam, the Muslims screen each other to the point Uthman, the one, the Muslim, they read his Quran today. Supposedly they claim that this is his Quran. Not only they killed him, they killed him, they cut his head, and before they do that, they took the hair of his beard one by one, making fun of him, torturing him. And after they killed him, they drag him in the street. And after that, they refused to bury him in any graveyard in the town. And this is the caliphate, who Muhammad, he promised him to go to heaven just because he gave him money. So Shia and Sunni, they, they, it's, it is the same cult, the same, the same madness, but they sponsor different politician. So the Sunni, they, pro they, they sponsor uh, Abu Bakr and his gang, and the Shia, they sponsor Ali and his gang. And now Islam is not about Muhammad anymore. It's about Abu Bakr and his gang and whoever after, and about Ali and his gang and whoever come after. So it's two gang fighting each other. It's also there's also a lot of uh, a lot of hostilities still going on. There was, there was there was so much there were so many more hostilities in the past, like I don't know a few centuries ago, uh, concerning the Sunni Caliphate fighting against the Shia Imamate and 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 so and the other way around. Sometimes one had the upper power, sometimes the other had the upper power. Uh, the word taqiyya, by the way, which is also very often brought up by uh, opponents of Islam, is something that has that has not originated within Shia Islam, but but that has become very very strong within Shia Islam. Uh, I want to explain it in a different uh, dedicated episode, but uh, the deal is basically that. Um, the, the, the deal is basically that, that, that the Shia have been so much persecuted by the Sunni Muslims that they started to develop this strategy of lying to Sunni Muslims in identifying themselves as Sunni Muslims. So a Shia Muslim walks around within the Sunni people of its of his country, and whenever someone asks him uh, what he believes in, he would say, uh, "I am a Sunni Muslim. I'm, I'm a Hanifi. I'm this. I'm that." So they, they wouldn't they wouldn't out themselves as Shia Muslims. Uh, so they wouldn't be killed by Sunni Muslims or wouldn't be persecuted, wouldn't be, you know, disadvantaged by Sunni Muslims. It, it also shows that uh, that Islam has been at war with itself for so many centuries, with itself, not only with others. So when Muslim apologists nowadays, especially especially moderate Muslims or especially fundamentalist Muslims today come, and, come out and claim that the Islamic world is only in such big misery nowadays because of uh, the West and because of how the West bombs the Islamic world and so on. That is a complete lie. Not only has the Islamic world been uh, at a jihad in a fight against the non-Muslim world, against the rest of the world for centuries, uh, the Islamic world has also been fighting itself among each other for centuries. The Shia-Sunni divide has been going on since uh, only, as, only less than a century after Muhammad's death. And only a century ago, only one or two centuries ago have they started calming a little bit down and uh, tolerating each other a little bit but if you go to iran or if you go to I, I would give iraq as a very nice example if you go to iraq and and you have uh discussions with sunni muslims and shia muslims you can still see in very basic casual daily talks daily conversations that the two hate each other uh i for example have been to iraq uh, several times and uh 
whenever I was there, without ever bringing up the topic, when, when I sat down with uh, someone from the other side, I always heard curses against the other side, like from a Shia Muslim against the Sunni Muslim, or from a Sunni Muslim against the Shia Muslim. The divide has been going on forever. So uh, while, while some people in the West especially try to sell us the notion that Islam is all about peace and tolerance, and that Muslims among themselves are completely peaceful if the, if the evil West, if America only left them alone, the reality is completely different. In reality, there are so many parties to so many different sides, especially the Sunni and the Shia, who still hate each other and who still fight each other wherever they can. The only thing now is that the Islamic world is so much inferior to the Western world, and that's why they are trying to calm a little bit down and trying to calm, a, trying to be a little bit more diplomatic rather than just fighting and killing each other. Uh, I thought that was an important note to add. Uh, anyway, everyone, if you want to direct more questions, uh, you can use a super chat or you can just uh, type your question in the comments. I will try to uh, try to compile your questions and ask them to Christian Prince, or also include them in my in my own uh, talks. Uh, Christian Prince. Mm -hmm. um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. There, there has been some. There, there have been some questions about your belief. You are a Christian, right? Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. I've seen. I've seen here some. Uh, someone saying that you are an atheist and that you that you sell yourself as a Christian or something like that. That's complete nonsense. You say, right? Yeah. Well, I am an atheist, and the way I like banana is that will make them uh, pro prove that I'm an ape. I, you know, I am an atheist somehow. <laughs> <laughs> people, okay. people are funny. <laughs> In the last in the last month, we have at least thirty people left Islam in my channel, and many of them they accepted the Christ. So how I will be in the world? I will be an atheist. That will be funny. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I could say the same with with pride about my about my own work. By the way, we receive so many messages from Muslims who say that uh, that that they are thankful that they have left Islam, that they have either become Christians or they have gone a different path. So it's it's really absolutely great when you see uh, people. Typing insults and stuff in the comment section, you would you would think that the Muslim world is only completely outraged with us, but uh, many are only outraged because so many are uh, leaving Islam due to these talks, and, it, and that is a great thing to do, Christian Prince. So, uh, I would like to ask you at this point, why did you decide to do this? Why did you, why did you decide to go out and talk to uh, Muslims and debate them? Well, you know, uh, <clears throat> since I was a young uh, kid. Um, if you try to learn about Islam, nobody want to talk about it. And um, if you are born of a Christian family, they don't even like to talk about it because they are afraid that their kids might be involved in the trouble if they speak about it. You know, it's a, it's a very risky Absolutely. religion. You know, so I decide to study so I can find answers first for myself. When a Muslim, he says to me, "What we hear every day these days," and I don't know how to answer him. I have no idea what he's talking about. So I decide to study. So I decided to study Islamic law, and uh, that helped me just to understand, uh, you know, let's say the structures of Islam as a cult, but did not really give me too much knowledge as uh, as know what is deep inside the cult. The knowledge you have to search yourself and study and etc. And now, as you see, the Muslims are in this ability. Um, almost sometime in the in the same day, I received between two to three Muslims leaving Islam. And most of them, they leave Islam and they accept Christ, even sometime life on air. And the reason for that, the Muslims, they got shocked when they hear what Islam is about. And they never heard this before. And each time I speak to a Muslim, he said to me the same sentence. I never heard this before. I never heard this before. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, you never heard this before because nobody will not tell you about this before. For this is not good to say. The same as in the Quran, chapter 5, verse 101 says, ask not questions. And verse 102, it says, why? Because if you ask those questions, same questions, people of former generation left Islam because of them. So don't ask, don't tell. This is what Islam is about. So Islam can stand uh, as long, uh, you know, there is a there is somebody who want to force Islam on you. There, there's a sword. If you leave, we want to kill you. Actually, while we are chatting now, there's a guy he posts in your chat. Uh, his name, I think, uh, Abdul Rahman al-Dakhil. He said, that for every ex-Muslim you should know, soon you will lose your head, you know? And this is how they they can keep Islam surviving. You leave Islam, mm -hmm. you will lose your head. But they cannot answer you, they cannot refute you, they cannot prove you wrong, so they threat you to... This is why when Muhammad died, the same, same day Muhammad died, th thousands and thousands of people left Islam. So what Abu Bakr, he did, you know, 
the the uh, and and the, and the Muslim after Muhammad after he died, is people they start leaving Islam. They decide to launch a war. It's called the War of Apostate, and I'm sure you know about it. Yeah, the the wars. Yeah, why people they decide to leave simply because he forced them into into Islam, and even the Quran he confirmed that. So uh, 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 Islam cannot stand questions, not only criticism, normal question, a, a very simple question, as long as uh, like I have in the screen now, the Kaaba, if we ask the Muslims, you say you are not a pagan, so why you kiss a black stone? They say because the Prophet kissed it. Okay, why the Prophet kiss it? Because it's holy. Why it's holy? Because the Prophet kiss it. Very nice point, by the way. There's, there's this hadith in which uh, Omar, I think, or Uthman, I don't know which one. No, it's, it's Omar, yeah. Uh, where he says to the black stone in the hadith, uh, I know that you are no, of no benefit to me. If I didn't see the, the Prophet kiss you, I wouldn't kiss you. That's what Omar says in the hadith, right? Yes. You confirm that, I guess. But this is, but this it's is a, absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, but this is a problem here because simply that's mean, uh, that's mean Omar, he confirmed that Muhammad either a liar or is a hypocrite because why he is kissing a stone is useless mm -hmm. they are just following it blindly same time that will prove Muhammad to be a liar because Muhammad he told the Muslims if you even uh, uh, touch the stones not even kiss it the two corners uh, if you if you touch them the, the Yemeni corner and the black stone corner if you touch them those they forgive your sin and then here we need to ask ourselves how in the world touching stones can forgive sin if you are not a pagan? And this is what makes it more funny that the Muslim they claim that we are as a Christians, me, myself, you are not Christian. Me, myself, mm -hmm. uh, is, a, is a pagan because we are not Muslims. But they are the one who believe in touching stones, touching those stones erase their sin. So who is the mm -hmm. pagan here? So uh, the stone, not only stone, I mean, the Muslims, they, they, they kiss a stone, they bow in front of a stone, they go around the stone and they pray in the direction of the stone. So what what if this is not paganism, what is paganism? Absolutely. I, I would like to say this again to everyone, to every uh, Muslim who is listening. Uh, you might not be informed about this or your scholars, your local imams might tell you that, that this is something very beautiful, very nice when you tell you about it. But there, but there truly is a hadith where Omar says, that uh, he would not kiss the black stone because the black stone because from the black stone there can be no benefit to him but he is kissing the black stone because muhammad kissed the black stone this is an absolutely ridiculous hadith if you if you look at it if you if you think a bit further about it without relying on the weird interpretations of your local imams when you think about this hadith it implies that the, that the black stone is really of no benefit to you at all we are talking about the black stone which is attached to the kaaba in mecca and he also he also very clearly says that he is only kissing the black stone because Muhammad kissed the black stone. So you know nowadays many Muslims come out to tell us that uh, that Islam has so many practices that are completely beneficial to humans that are in some way spiritually or physically beneficial to to all of us. They try to tell us about uh, about science miracles and the Hadith and the Quran and so on. But there there is this Hadith. Why don't Muslims talk about that? The Hadith. Clearly he says that the stone has no benefit at all but he but Omar is only kissing it because Muhammad kissed the stone so you are doing an absolutely unnecessary and absolutely nonsensical practice that was only practiced by pre-islamic pagans before by pre-islamic polytheists before that the Quran hates so much and this practice has been adopted without any doubt into Islam, into the Quran, into Islam. And Muslims are practicing this in masses now when they go to the Hajj, to Mecca. This is really ridiculous. So every Muslim who is watching, every Muslim who is going to hear this, please think about this for one second and think of any anything useful that you have in your head about this. It will be, you, you will probably end up with the same conclusion. There you is know, something if you, wrong with Islam. If you, if you have, if I have my, if I have uh, any of my books, I, I have two new books I published not long time ago. It's called Six and Allah, variant number one and variant number two. You will see that the black stone, and this is all from the history books of Islam, not from my own. That women before Islam, they used to go to the black stone, which is considered as a vagina. It is the fertility god. It used to have a clitoris inside it. They used to go. And they put their hand over their vagina when they have their period and then they place their hand inside the black stone praying to Allah which is the moon God to make them get a breath net so they can have babies 
and this is why Muhammad he said that the black stone used to be white like milk and then the sin of mankind made it black why because when women they place their blood uh, they, they, those people believe that when the women she is not getting bread net because simply she is she commit a sin God is angry so now what she do she go to the Kaaba she put her hand over her private part when she is bleeding from period and then she put her hand inside the black stone and then she prayed to Allah to get a bread net and then the man after that he will come and they do hack actually the hajj was not hajj it is hack hack means scratching the male they used to scratch their penis inside the black stone after the female they pass by so your wife she go first she put her hand over her vagina with the blood in her hand she placed her hand inside the black stone then the guy after that the husband supposedly or the spouse uh, uh, he go and he place his penis in the black stone and he scratched the black stone with it and then supposedly that will help them to have babies because that will make Allah happy so this is a very demonic satanic uh, uh, pagan cult same time when the when the Muslim they say to us uh, that this is a holy stone and all of them they agree even Muhammad he said that the black stone is going to have two eyes and tongue in the judgment day and is going to speak our sin so Muhammad he claimed that this stone is a living stone. It's not just a stone. It's a living stone. Even in the, there's a hadith that says that the black stone is the right hand of Allah. All of this leads us to one thing, that this is nothing but a pure paganism. So when a Muslim, he speak uh, like uh, there's a guy in the chat, he said, why you kiss the cross? First of all, kissing the cross have nothing to do with the teaching of Jesus. If somebody do it, this is his business. But Jesus nowhere says kiss, kiss the cross. So we are talking about Muhammad kissing a stone. We are not talking about Jesus and Jesus kissing cross. You know what I mean? So we, if you want to compare, compare between the teaching the, the, of the founder and the not, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, accusing Muslims that they kiss a stone and that will make them pagan. I am saying Muhammad himself is kissing the stone. So because if you kiss a stone and Muhammad don't tell you to do that, then I cannot say Islam is teaching you that. But if you kiss a stone following the steps of your prophet, and you believe that this is a holy stone and by the way there's nothing left of the black stone the black stone the muslims they have today in the kaaba uh, uh, after al qurmati he destroyed the kaaba and he screamed in the middle of the kaaba saying to allah where is your birds if you remember there's a chapter it's called the chapter of the elephant where supposedly allah he sent uh, uh, an army of uh, sorry uh, uh, a, a army of a bird uh, uh, to destroy mm -hmm. an army of elephant and uh, uh, and uh, then uh, why because this is his house I mean you cannot destroy the house of Allah no way Allah will not let you do it so in chapter 105 very small chapter it's called the chapter of the elephant very funny chapter is claiming that Allah he sent an army of birds to destroy an army of elephants was coming from Ethiopia to, to destroy the Kaaba and it's, this is very funny because al Qurmati he destroyed the black stone destroyed the Kaaba he took the black stone and then he made it pieces and actually the Muslim now they don't have a black stone if you go and check the pictures you will find that the black stone now is a small eight pieces and they glue it together with expensive wax with nice perfume to make it stay together and they have to do maintenance almost every few days to keep the black stone from being mm -hmm. stolen it has been destroyed before Islam and it has been destroyed several times after Islam so it's really mm -hmm. it's really ridiculous and you know al Qurmati, al Qurmati. by the way you said you said that the Sunni they always uh, uh, persecute the Shia, correct? Mm -hmm. Not always. The the Shia actually. No, the, no, the Shia. Not always. I mean, for, yeah. for a long time. Yeah, but the Shia they did the same. It's about who is in the power. The one in the power. Yeah, of he, he, you know, he he humiliated the other one, and then they will find themselves. They have to use the the taqiyya. So uh, during the time, and this is what Islam Islam work. I mean, can you imagine that uh, all of Egypt used to be Shia? How they how they became all of them Sunni in one day? Simply, you change the king. You change the king, everybody falls into new, and new, the new will believe. Who dare to say no? So, uh, 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 when when the Shia control in Egypt, the Shia, they were doing the same humiliation for the Sunni. When the Sunni yeah. con control the, the uh, you know, until now, the, the, the Sunni now are the majority in Egypt. The Shia, very little. So, if you are a Shia and you live in Egypt, actually not two years ago or three years ago, they, they killed a sheikh, a Shia sheikh, and they drag his body, and then they cut him pieces and the government they could not do really anything about it and this is why because they are a small tiny Shia minority but if you go to Iraq the story is the same but the opposite 
if you are a Sunni, they will kill you. They will drag you in the street. And uh, and, uh, and and if you are a Shia who live in Iraq, but in a Sunni area, they will do the same to you. You know, like this is what happened during the time of ISIS. ISIS, they go in the street and they shoot anyone as a Shia just because he's a Shia. So it, it's an ugly cult, and they they practice what they learn from their God. By the way, that's that's also a, a, when when ISIS persecutes minorities like like the Shia in, in in Islamic regions, they do that completely based on Islamic texts. They do that completely uh, based on uh, Islamic hadith that they also cite. Uh, one very important hadith that exists that that ISIS has has cited forever is. Uh, is even a prediction by is even a prophecy by Muhammad about the future, where Muhammad says that in the future there will be a people who will be, who will pray, who will act like Muslims, who will dress like Muslims, and so on. But their faith will not go beyond their throat or something like that. I don't know. You you might know the wording a, a little bit better. But uh, the hadith literally says, wherever you find them, kill them. This is what the hadith literally says, and this is a this is an end time prophecy in Islam, and that's also what what ISIS cites when they go around and kill uh, Shia Muslims and other people. So it's 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 really ridiculous once you get into these uh, into all these topics. Once you approach Islam a bit skeptically, all the stuff, all the disgusting stuff that you find out about Islam, all the disgusting stuff that you don't tell you that, that they don't tell you about Islam when you are a little child who uh, grows up in a Muslim family. I mean, I was subject to the same uh, way of education. We have been told from childhood that this is a beautiful religion, this is uh, the truth of all time, and so on. But uh, once you grow up and once you look into uh, the things into the matter of, by yourself, you will find out so much cancer in, uh, in in your Islamic sources that it will make your stomach turn. So, uh, as said, by the way, a, a, little, a little anecdote to to what to what Christian Prince said: uh, Egypt and a very large Muslim region was once uh, ruled by the Shia Muslims. It was called the Fatimid Caliphate at one time, and other times it, it was uh, under different names. And uh, the Shia even ruled over Mecca and Medina. Many Muslims think that is something impossible because they believe that that the lands have been under their own true guide forever. But that's not true. Uh, Mecca and Medina have been ruled by the Shia, and Sunni Muslims consider Shia Muslims uh, not Muslims. They consider them kuffar. They consider them munafiq, so uh, which means heretics or or hypocrites. So I don't know. We have said so many things that tell us that uh, th the basic education that a Muslim receives is completely false, as it turns out when you uh, study Islam by yourself. And this is just one of those things. It's really crazy. So every Muslim who is listening, please open your book, open your Quran, open your Hadith books and start reading it by yourself. If you really need to get a second opinion, if you really need to listen to scholars, read the, 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 the interpretation, read the exegesis, the tafsir of Ibn Kathir. You will find so much disgusting stuff in that. You will probably join me in criticizing Islam in the future if you do that. Or, or you will join Christian Prince in criticizing Islam. I don't know, whoever you join. By the way, uh, a short thing to say, if you want to make a super chat, guys, uh, please, I can't see the super chats that you make on Christian Prince's channel. We have the live chat open on both of our channels. I can only uh, see the ones that you make on my channel. So I'm sorry if I, if I miss those on the other side. But uh, let me quickly squeeze those in for you, Christian Prince. Uh, Falco XTZ said, did you know the Blackstone got destroyed and robbed? Yes, we just talked about it. Thank you so much, Falco. Uh, Misty Radical Love Miranda said, do you think that Muhammad might have got different revelations than what his followers put in the, on the original Quran? We love you both. Thank you both. Well, thank you so much, uh, Miranda. I would say that uh, that Muhammad, that we don't even know what Muhammad really received, that we don't even know what Muhammad really said, because the Quran that we read today is completely based on what other people after him present us, what Othman after Muhammad uh, put into the Quran. There might have been so many more things inside the Quran. Uh, there have been actually, according to Islamic beliefs, some things in the Quran that have been later abrogated and, and removed from the Quran. And there might have been so many uh, more things missing from the Quran or so many, so, ma so many more things added into the Quran. Christian Prince, what will you say about this? Well, you know, I don't really care if the Quran was original, it's still original or not, or it is corrupt, because I cannot prove the corrupt to be corrupted twice, and there's no point of it. I believe this is a false book anyway, 
and the Quran is mm -hmm. filled with the stories proving that this is a false book a God who says that the sperm is coming from the ribs of the women cannot be God women have no sperm <laughs> A God who says the man have a sperm coming from his backbone. This is very silly. And all of us, we know what testicles do. Uh, a God yeah. who do not even remember which one he created first, uh, the, the stars or, uh, or, or, or the trees. Uh, that cannot be God. Uh, I mean, the Quran is a, is a, is a chain of madness. A God who teaches us that he have hail coming from mountains in heaven. And this is how hail is created. This is a silly God, you know. A God who teaches us in the Quran about a flying carpet for Suleiman. And so, man, he have an army of genie and birds and chickens. I mean, you have to be mad person to believe in such a such a fiction stories. Uh, so, for me, I prefer to stay uh, focusing in the Quran as they have it today, not in the corruption of the Quran. However, if we go as an example, there's a big scholar. His name is Al Suyuti. Al Suyuti alone, he reported that there's more than fifty-seven corruption in the book, and the corruption we are speaking about is a huge. As an example, a Suyuti, he says, and he proved that from, uh, uh, for sure, from other Islamic scholars and reference, that the the chapter of uh, Al-Baqarah used to be equal to the chapter of Al-Ahzab. And that means there's hundreds of verses are missing in one chapter alone. Just one chapter alone, hundreds of verses are missing. So uh, according to Uthman, according to Umar uh, al-Khattab, that the Quran was a thousand thousand and twenty seven thousand letter that's mean there's more than 80 percent of the Quran is gone actually even the hadith which the Muslim Sunni they believe in the, it confirmed that there was the there is when when uh, when Muhammad and I, uh, when Muhammad he died Aisha she said that the Muslims were busy with his death and then a goat came and ate the Quran and right now there's many verses are missing we cannot find them so uh, uh, the Quran is corrupt or not? It's a stupid book anyway. But is it corrupt? I believe nothing in the Quran is a Quran because I believe the Quran is a collection of stories and there's no guarantee that one yes. word is there is coming from Muhammad. Who is Muhammad? We do not know. Like you see the Muslims, I saw videos saying that the book written by John, John who? The book written by Ma Matthew, Matthew who? And by the way, if you open the book of John, you will see John speaking about himself, who is he? But if we open the book of, of Quran to see who is Muhammad, who is Muhammad? We don't know. We do not know his name. We do not know because Muhammad is not the name of Muhammad. This is why the Quran sometimes says Ahmad, sometimes say Mustafa, sometimes say Ahmad. So who is Muhammad? So Muhammad obviously is a nickname. Okay, who is Muhammad? We, we, don't, don't, have, know. we don't have proper uh, historical sources about that either. For example, there was a uh, the, the Byzantine emperor at the time of of of, uh, of of Caliph Umar, who corresponded with him, even said that Muhammad is not even a real character. That, that Muhammad was probably made up, and that the religion of Islam was made up by 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 Omar and his friends. That's what uh, a Byzantine emperor said more than a thousand years ago. It's it, a historical it might be. It reasons. might be he's a real person. It might be. But it, it uh, might, sure. but, the, but the name we have in front of us, this is not his name. If you read my books, I will find, I'll give you a reference where even the Muslim themselves, they speak that when Muhammad, he was born, his grandfather, he called him Qatham, not Muhammad. So nobody knows who is Muhammad. Nobody knows. Uh, if we read the book of history, you will see, even in my books, you will see that uh, Muhammad was born four years after his father's death. I mean, how in the world this can happen? A guy, his father passed away four years uh, 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 before, and then he is born four years after his father. And then you say to me, he is the son of a guy. His name is Abdullah. Uh, uh, the father of Muhammad, his name is Abdullah. But yet he don't believe in Allah. So what does that mean? This is impossible. So what, what happened, I believe, that Muhammad, everything about him, he, he, he tried to hide his identity. Let us say he have a shameful identity. So Muhammad, maybe his father was, uh, the, uh, if, you, if you read the names of the uncles of Muhammad, all of them, they are, the slaves of the one of the idols around the Kaaba, like Uzza and Allat uh, and uh, Al Muttalib. So uh, uh, the names themselves are idols, and Muhammad's father, he must have an idol uh, God too. So what they did, they changed the real name of Muhammad's father because it's a shame, for they, that will make him the son of a guy who worshiped Al Uzza, as an example. So they changed it with Abdullah. Abdullah in Arabic, if you go right now in the Middle East, if somebody would not know who is he, we say Abdullah Fulan, which means unknown. We do not know really who is he. Abdullah Fulan, which means, I don't know, he is a slave of Allah. You know what I mean? What, what, the, what the word Abdullah mean? Like, if you do not know mm -hmm. him, I asked you who is, uh, etc. I said, I don't know, Abdullah. You know, he's a slave of Allah. 
So I do not know his first name. I do not know his last name. I do not know where he's coming from. Abdullah. So Muhammad is a son of Abdullah. But who is Abdullah? Nobody knows. Uh, uh, Muhammad is a son of a woman. Her name is Amina. But who is Amina? We do not really know much. Because even the Muslim, they say that Muhammad, when he was born, his family to try to get rid of him. And that is very weird. They send him to a better women. And they say the reason none of the female of the family wanted to breastfeed him for Muhammad. And this is a shame because this is a tribe and they are family. You know, the, the tribe, this is a tribe. This is a, you know, when we talk about tribe, those people, they die to defend each other. So how in the world, not even one female should want to feed the baby who was just born? Why did they want to do that? You know, so they send him out because simply he was rejected by the family for nobody except the birth of this child to be the, uh, the, the son of their, of, of their, uh, of their, you know, brother. Uh, and this is why we see Muhammad is, is is cast away trying to get rid of him. And then when they cast him to a Bedouin woman, uh, Muhammad, he used to have a, a, a seizure and he faint always. And the woman, she afraid that he will die between her hand and they will, she will, they will hold her uh, responsible for his death. So she cast him back and she sent him back, said, I cannot have him. You take your son. So the life story of Muhammad, nothing of it makes sense. What makes sense that because Muhammad he was suffer a lot from females, the females of his uncles as they claim, he hated women very much and he wanted to seek revenge from them when he got power. This is why we see Muhammad always speaking about women as they are the devil. They are the devil. So he want to abuse them the same as they abused him when he was a child. So we see Muhammad, he says, like uh, even when he have sex with the women, he says that women, she approach in the image of the devil and she leave yep. in the image of the devil. Yep. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I would like to answer some questions. Uh, Time Space said something interesting. He basically said, uh, why are there so many hadiths that are so much uh, concerning that when humans read it, they would question Islam? Did the authors of the hadith not, not think about these things? Well, I would uh, briefly say many people don't really know how the hadith came into existence. The hadith are even more complicated, even more weird than how the Quran came into existence. Uh, the Quran came into existence by compiling different uh, oral and written uh, notes by different people who were supposedly around Muhammad when he made his revelations, which is why the origin of the Quran is so questionable. As Christian Prince said right now, um, there are so many complications within within the Quran. We don't even know who wrote it. We don't know who the Muhammad is. It talks about. We don't uh, really know the context of many things in the Quran. There's also something very interesting that I would like every Muslim to consider, which is uh, chapter 9 in today's Quran. Uh, according to a very authentic hadith that we can all find and see, uh, the story of chapter 9 in the Quran is a very ambiguous uh, backstory because uh, when, when the people were compiling the Quran, they had the chapter 9 before them, in front of them, but they didn't really know where to put that chapter. They saw the beginning of the chapter, they saw the end of the chapter, but they had no idea where to place that chapter. Uh, some suggested to place that chapter into uh, another chapter. Some, some, some suggested to, uh, to place it between different chapters. And in the end, they came up with the solution that we have today, which is that, uh, that this chapter is the ninth chapter and, th and it doesn't start with uh, the regular start, which is in the name of Allah, Bismillah, as we see in other chapters. So uh, the hadith very clearly say that the people, when they were compiling the Quran, did not know what to do with the ninth chapter because Muhammad died before he gave them further instructions on what to do with this Quran. But when you are a Muslim, you learn that everything was completely, perfectly planned and arranged. And Allah uh, revealed the message to the Muslims. Muhammad gave the Muslims the message and the Muslims knew exactly what to follow and what to do. When you read the authentic hadith, you see the opposite. The people were just standing there with uh, several papers with several notes that they compiled and they didn't know what to do with this one specific chapter that's why when you read it today it sounds very weird uh, I want to take two super chats Michael Wilcox said Muslim scholars admitted that Bismillah is not in the old Quran that's a very interesting thing to talk about just a second MKC420 said uh, why do Muslims claim that a golden ratio is a Muslim miracle uh, 
I would like to give you one of those questions, question prints. I would like to answer the thing about the golden ratio uh, very quickly. Well, the golden ratio. For those who don't... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the golden ratio, yeah. if it's true, if it's true, that proved the Trinity. Because the well, golden. I, I would like. I would like to say uh, very simply, the golden ratio is nothing to be uh, to to take uh, miraculously, especially when we talk about the Quran and Islam. What Muslims do very often is that they, is, is they point out the golden ratio. They say, "Well, you put the golden ratio on a on a world map, you will find Mecca in the center of it." No, no, I did that. Uh, actually, this is false. I did. I did that, and I made a video about it. This is false. It's not true. It's, it's false. It's false. It's false absolutely. It's, the, the only way to make the uh, Mecca, as they claim, first of all, the the, the golden ratio based on in the calculation they try to do uh, it's based on fake line we made you know what i mean the mm -hmm. degrees the divide of the earth it is us we made this is not real yeah, so yeah. so when we say uh, like uh, uh, we say your location now in the map based on satellite this is not real this is a map we created this is a lot to do with Allah. Yes. So Absolutely. if if you want to measure that based on this, that would be you are stupid. It's not Allah who did that. It's me. The one who made this map is 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 God Himself. Secondly, even the calculation is wrong. We can do it, and the only way to make it correct, actually, according to them, is to have the Earth to be flat. Same time, yes. when a Muslim he speak about about uh, the location of the Kaaba. Just today, I was making a video about how the Kaaba is in the worst location. Actually, today the Kaaba, by the way, is under attack by uh, cockroaches i don't know if you saw the video i made so there's there's billions of cockroaches attacking mecca and uh, 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 the the prayer now is is uh, 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 is not allowed in in mecca until they fight it but if you go to uh, uh, to the live broadcast of mecca prayer it's still going which means this is a pre uh, recorded uh, uh, prayer now, if we go in the, in the, I will show you in the screen. Uh, if the Muslims they say that the Kaaba is based perfectly by Allah, then how the Muslims explain to us that the Kaaba in the worst location ever to be? As you see here with me, this is the Kaaba is flooded by the sewage. Each time little rain come, the Kaaba will be covered by the water of the sewage. So let us say this is the golden ratio of Allah. And Allah, he chose the Kaaba in the best location. And then Allah, he put it in a place where the Kaaba will be always flooded and uh, damaged. Because by the way, now, the Kaaba now, they they put the rocks together by uh, uh, by concrete. But before it was mud. And you, and you know what water do to, to mud, right? The water would destroy the structures. So because when, when, the, when the mud became wet, uh, uh, it is strong as long as dry. But when you put too much water, the mud will become, you know, like it became mud again, and then the Kaaba will be destroyed. So how they say to us that this is a location designed and chosen by Allah. And as we see in the screen, those who they are watching in my channel, uh, uh, the Kaaba is almost covered by the by the water, which is a dirty water. Because remember that the Mecca does not have a sewage. The Kaaba, the, the houses in, 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 in Mecca and most of Saudi Arabia, there's no sewage. They have a poopoo hole, like every house have its own hole in the yard. And then if a flood came, air, all the poopoo in the hole will fly in the top of the water, will float as if it's a cake. And then as you see, look with me in the Kaaba picture, you will see the cake is all over around the Kaaba. So here we go. Your God, Allah, he chose the Kaaba. He put it in the place which you like to be holy. And now the Kaaba is covered by poop. And by dead rats and dead mice and water which is coming from a sewage and a flood so now if if imagine you hire the most expensive company to 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 choose for you a place where you this is the best place in the in the world say to them I want the best place for my house I am God huh I want the place for my house holy place and then they choose this place I mean those this, this engineering company they are the, the worst so if your God is the one who chose this, you, this is mean your God is an idiot. He could not choose a better place. Same time, let us say for the sake of argument, Allah is the one who chose this place. And now after that, he noticed that the Kaaba is flooded. Can't Allah move his finger? The Muslim, they say to us, if Allah wants to fix something, he say, B is going to be. Okay, Allah, say to the Kaaba, all the ground under the Kaaba go up. So when the flood comes next time, the Kaaba will not be flooded. Obviously, Allah is not. Uh, is not God is this is a city uh, 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 a statement 
And the golden ratio makes no sense. Uh, Christian Prince, finally, what would you say about the whole uh, thing? I've seen so many people talk about that, uh, that that the Mecca that we see in the in the Quranic description is not the Mecca that we have today. And uh, some 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 others, some critics of Islam have suggested that the actual Mecca in the Quran was at a different place, like Petra, that the Kaaba was in, was in Petra, and so on. Uh, I don't really go very much into those theories because I don't think that there is enough proof, enough evidence uh, that we can take to really talk about something like that firmly. But what do you think about those arguments? Well, you see, there is a temple in Yemen, not in Petra. It's called Al Makkah. Al Makkah. And Al Makkah is a temple for the moon god. Uh, if you go to chapter 3, verse number 96, it says, uh, The first. Uh, second, uh, like a uh, 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 second place appointed for mankind was in at Bekka. Now, the Muslims they try to say, Oh, this is Bekka, this is Mecca, and they say to you because the Arab sometimes they pronounce the letter B uh, as uh, 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 M and sometimes M as B, and then sometimes Qa as K. So, that's what I'm saying actually. Bekka and Makka is. Is you know what what uh, what the Quran here is saying that there is a holy place, the first place where uh, God He chose to be His temple is, and that is the Moon God, is the temple of Makkah, which is in Yemen, and you go there, you will find that this is the temple of the Moon God, and uh, the one who built it supposedly, many historians they say that the one who built it is the Sabian. And Muhammad himself was called Sabian for for a while, and even Muhammad mm -hmm. he promised the Sabian to go to heaven, which is weird because Sabian they worship stars and planets. So absolutely, very yeah. important point. Yeah. So here the Sabian they build the temple of Al Makkah, and uh, and Muhammad is confirming. This is why, if you remember, I showed I showed a hadith that there is a there there's two corners. If you touch them, those two corners they uh, uh, they forgive your sin. Okay, why they forgive the sin? Because one of them is the Yemeni corner. Why it's Yemen? It's called Yemeni corner. The Muslim they say because it's facing Yemen. So what facing Yemen? Well, that will make it Yemeni corner. And why this corner? If you touch it, the same as the black stone, is going to forgive your sin. The Yemeni corner contain stones from the temple of Al Makkah in Yemen. So what they do, <laughs> like the same some Christians, when they want to build a church, they bring a bones of a saint. And they put the bones in, in uh, like in the structures of the uh, of of the church, the new church they want to build, and they build a church in the top of the bones of the saint. The Muslims, Muhammad and the Arab before him, they bring stones from Al Makkah, and because this is holy stones, so to make it simple, why you want to go and travel all the way to Yemen to touch those stones? We bring the stones for you. So we bring some stones from that temple, we put them in the wall of the Kaaba, and here we go, you have the temple of Makkah right next to your door. You do not need to go all the way there, and you can just practice your uh, pagan religion right here in Mecca. So Mecca is a, is a, is a copy of Al-Makkah. A hadith even says that, uh, that that when the companions of Muhammad went down to Yemen for uh, for some conquest or to to invite people to to Islam, uh, there was a temple called Kaaba. That's that's uh, literally what the what the hadith says. And the hadith goes further on saying that a companion of Muhammad uh, went ahead and burnt the temple down and dismantled it, which is ironic because. Uh, the, the Kaaba that we call Kaaba today is also a Kaaba, so it's 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 very much the same thing. It's 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 a mystery how how Islam got away with that. And you see in the in the Islamic sources themselves that there is uh, that, that 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 there is such a thing, so such a relation between the Kaaba that we have today in Mecca and the Kaaba that was apparently also in Yemen. There was twenty six so Kaaba. There was twenty six Kaaba actually, you know, mm -hmm. in the Arabian mm -hmm. Peninsula, and all even the Muslims they agree about that. So uh, every Kaaba, like the Kaaba, is, is simply is a mall. Kaaba is not really, is not something special. It's a mall mm -hmm. where people they place their idols around it, and even the Muslims agree around the Kaaba there was 360 idols, and uh, people they go to go by, there to buy and sell. It's a business place. Same time, it's a religious place. So mm -hmm. there's 26 Kaaba, and every town have their own Kaaba, and they bring stones from a holy stone. 
if you I don't know if you know about this hadith as an example uh, the, the 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 most a Muslim very well known Muslim said and before Islam uh, we used to worship stones and if we could not find a stone even like if we find a let us say uh, I will read the hadith this is Sahir Bukhari it says we used to worship stones and when we found a better stone then than the first one we would throw the first one and take the later but if we could not get a stone now look at the rituals they create an own stone by rituals if we could not find a, a stone which is better than the one to worship uh, we would collect some earth ie soil and bring a sheep and milk the sheep over it and perform tawaf around it you see tawaf so Tawaf mm -hmm. is something they do long before Islam have nothing to do with Muhammad have nothing to do with Abraham Have nothing to do even with the existence of the Kaaba They make a stone from even from dirt and milk they mix it together and they make a, a, a make a shape of uh, of a rock And then they go around it doing Tawaf mean going around it. This is what Tawaf mean so uh, 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 This is what uh, this is what the Arab do always and nothing new and Muhammad he just copy exactly what was before him Absolutely. This is a very important point, especially to the to the Muslims who are watching or to, to the Muslims who are going to watch. Uh, th this this is a hadith that Christian Prince just read for us. It says it says uh, very explicitly. It describes very explicitly that in pre-Islamic Arabia, people used to worship stones and people used to take stones and replace uh, replace their exist existing stones with better stones and then perform the tawaf around them. Tawaf means the thing that they, that Muslims do nowadays, circling around the Kaaba. This is a very clear pre-Islamic practice. I explained uh, all of this uh, Kaaba story in in a, in a video that I made before, which is the most watched video on my channel, which is called The Truth About the Kaaba, in which uh, I also tell you that the Tawaf is a practice that had nothing to do with Christianity or with Judaism, that, that didn't exist in those religions at all. Uh, the stone the stone that we have the black stone at the kaaba and the kaaba itself are also two elements that are very important in pre-islamic pagan religions and cultures they have also nothing to do with Juda with judaism and christianity and uh, a regular muslim is never told about this but when you go into this you will find out that that these practices indeed come from pre-islamic paganism so uh taken all with all of this taken into consideration when you look at these sources and when you use your head only a little bit not even too much you will see that islam basically evolved out of pre-Islamic paganism, adopted some Christian and Jewish practices, and then started selling itself as an Abrahamic religion, as the true Abrahamic religion. But it is completely based on pre-Islamic Arab pagans and their rituals. Muhammad, so, he copy, you know, Muhammad, he copy from here, mm -hmm. from there. To, he, Muhammad, he tried yeah. to make, as an example, in the beginning, Muhammad, he don't have something it's called Ramadan. So what Muhammad used to do? Muhammad, he was looking around him, and everybody have a fasting except him so he decided to have fasting like you know the christian have fasting the, the jews have uh, fasting so how come the pagan have fasting so he need he need a, he need a fasting day uh, uh so he decided to come with the fasting so he he was you know he looked around him some hadith they say that he copied from the jews ashura some they say he copied from the pagans so the the pagan used to to uh, to fast ashura and even muhammad he said that the one who fast Ashura, Allah will forgive his sin for the last year with, which passed. This is how important it is. Just if you fast Ashura. And now if you ask the Muslim, do you fast Ashura? Muslim, they say no. Okay. How this fasting was so important to Muhammad to the point if you fast in that day, will forgive all your sin for the last year. They say to you, because at that time, Muhammad, he did not have Ramadan yet. So we replace Ramadan, we replace uh, Ashura by Ramadan. Okay, well, if, if you are saying to me that one day fasting is going to forgive the sin of all the year, that's mean this day is better than Ramadan. Because if you fast the whole month of Ramadan, you will not have your sin forgiven for the past year. But if you fast this day, your sin is forgiven for the whole past year. But here you will notice Muhammad, he was trying just to make an excuse to accept this fasting to make it as his fasting and when he found something but they're the same as the hadith about the stones you know we find better stones we leave the the stone before it and we go to the to the new stone 
here Muhammad he found Ashura is a way to to make himself look like a prophet and then he liked Ramadan better and because this is what the, the Sabian they do so he wanna he, he wanna be hypocrite as a Sabian so he told them okay Sabian I will do what you do you you fast Ramadan I will fast Ramadan the Sabian they do evolution okay we will do evolution like the Sabian exactly exactly the same so Muhammad he copy everything he have from somebody nothing he have the only thing Muhammad is his own fabrication is verses in the Quran about sex or money so like Muhammad when to sleep with women he make verse says any woman she want to give her vagina to the Prophet so he can sleep with her that is Muhammad fabrication but most of the rest as an example the flying carpet of Suleiman this is from the Legion of the Jews the seven sleepers this is a, a story written by the Christians fiction story the Christian they wrote it just as an example how the Christians are persecuted and one day they will be victorious uh, the story of Alexander the Great how though he found the Sun sitting in murky water this is a fiction story written by a, 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 a Syrian writer who is speaking about the real figure which is Alexander the Great but the story itself is a fiction that he went all the way and he found the Sun sitting in the murky water and then Muhammad he adopt all those stories and he put them in the Quran and he claimed that he received those from his God Thank you very much. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, I want to take two uh, more super chats. MKC420 said, Thanks, AP. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much for the super chat. And Oscar Begol said, Wasn't Muhammad a victim of uh, Satan himself when he flirted and married Zainab? Because the hadith says, uh, Satan is the third when a man and a woman are together. Very good point. I don't think we have to go very much into this, but uh, a hadith indeed says that uh, if a woman and a man are together, uh, which refers to an unmarried unmarried couple uh, that could get married then the third of them is Satan but Muhammad was also alone with with Zainab according to biographies of Muhammad uh, and, and Zainab was the wife of his adopted son and then he ended up uh, he ended up marrying the wife of his adopted son so it, it appears he was very much the victim of what he himself said uh, we could also see this as uh, Muhammad packing his insecurities into the hadith into his preachings to his own audience so when Muhammad saw that something was not really uh, was not really good for society but it happened to him he apparently included this in the hadith and uh, along with that we also have so many weird teachings like that a woman approaches and retires in the shape of Satan and so on uh, very good point Oscar Bigo thank you so much I would say, Christian Prince, uh, that we stop here at this point. We have talked for about one and a half hours. Uh, it was a it was a very, very very great live chat. We have made you have made very great points. I think there is so much in this live chat uh, that that Muslims can take out of and that they can. Uh, go on to and think further about their own religion and discover that there is something wrong with Islam. You have made very great points. I appreciate that so much. So uh, thank you again for joining, Christian Prince. Thank you very much uh, for having me. Do you have any last words to our audience? Well, you audience? know, I, I say to everybody who is listening, anything I say to you, or I don't know, uh, Apostle the Prophet, if, so, if we say something to you, check it out. If it's a true love at us, <laughs> you know, if it's a true love at us, here we go. We show on the screen all the reference. We show you that this is what happened. And uh, you cannot run away. You can call us names. You can say whatever you want, but you cannot get away from what is in, in the screen. This is your books. This is your reference. It's not us who print it. It's not us who reserve it. It's not us who uh, uh, copy it by heart. And it's not us who brought it to you. It's in there, but you did not read it. And now we are sharing it with you. So don't be upset from what we share with you. This is your cult. Live with it. Thank you very much for having me, my friend. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, thanks again. I will be back very soon with a dedicated video probably this week. I'm still trying to recover from my little help. All right, guys. We are done with the, the apostate prophet. Uh, I hope we have a good time. We're still here. We are not done. I am with you. Uh, you know, I notice how the Muslims are funny in their questions in the text. But nobody can answer anything. I mean, we talk about tomato, they talk about potato. No. We talk about tomato, they talk about potato. You ask the Muslim, why Muhammad, he said, fast Ashura? They do not know. I mean, why? how if you fast one day is equal to the whole year and your sin is forgiven? You know? 
that will not that does, doesn't make sense and why now you don't fast it no more i mean this is very important one day just one day i will do a sin for the whole year sleeping around having whatever you know uh, having sex with the goat and her, her and her girlfriends and then after that i fast ashura and i'm clean that's it i mean this is fantastic i wish all religion they have that that's wonderful my friend you do not even need to take a shower you know you do all the garbage you want in the world and then you fast ashura and you are done yeah so uh, so how how this is now is abolished how this is you know suddenly became not important we have muhammad mustafa he is there he is saying never how are you muhammad mustafa call me muhammad mustafa and explain to me this hadith how your prophet saying that if you fast in this day will forgive your sin all the year before and this is something the pagan used to fast what do you say any muslim my skype is open feel free to call me if you wish hmm who is a muslim when i explain to us and here we go muhammad he come with ramadan he learned from the sabian and suddenly uh, ashura is not important so now let us fast ashura uh, sorry let us fast ramadan look you look you like your god he is not sure what to fast and muhammad is looking for a religion which one is better the prophet said the fast of the day of ashura for indeed i anticipate that allah will forgive the sin of the year before it explain to me the, what how this happened i'm going to have all kind of sin for the coming year i'm not worried about it no more i will fast the day of ashura a year from now actually who want to explain to us what ashura somebody is asking in the text what is ashura who want to tell us <laughs> they don't know because they stole the name they have no idea what the name mean they do not know what ramadan is about they do not know what ashura is about they do not know what mecca is about they do not know what the quran is about allah knows best this is the answer the very famous uh, answer muslims they give us allah knows best my friend <clears throat> We have a uh, we have somebody trying to go. Let us see. Answer, Abdul. Answer. Do you hear me, Abdul? Yes, Abdul. All right, Abdul. So, right. so why why if you fast in Ashura, Allah will forgive the sin in of one year? Why not? No, tell me why. No. Yeah. So tell me why not. Tell me why. I mean, what what you did? If a, if a guy he did not eat for a few hours, that is 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 equivalent for all the sin you did in a year before. Because Allah is merciful, He wants to if, forgive. If, 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 if. So I will go and rape women. I will go and rape women, and I will go and rape children, and I will go and kill and steal and do all kind of sin and then what i do i fast for eight hours and that will will wipe my sin where is the wisdom this is merciful or this is a joke well, he said well, he it says in front of you it says forgive the sin of the year to before it all the sin wait, the sin wait. what is sin is it killing as a sin is it rape is a sin oh i forgot you are a muslim raping and raping and killing is not sin for you did he did did allah is the punishment of, uh, of killing or... my friend it says forgive the sin that's it the sin is forgiven the sin all the sin all the sin is forgiven all the year not one sin not two no. sin the sin of a year it's in the front of us you are lying my friend read it it didn't say rape uh, in, in the verse of so what what he will forgive you okay hold on, guys didn't say rape didn't say rape it says sin it says sins the sins you commit last year what people they commit sin give us the list like what? It is, it, like it what? Is you sneeze? You ate your boogers? What is the sin which Allah will forgive you for the last year? What exactly? Give us a list of the sin. 
it's Allah. It, it's up to Allah. To, to, so to how you know? It. As long it's up to Allah, why you contradict yourself? A second ago you said to me it's not rape. So how you say it's not up to us? It's up to Allah now. Here we go. Allah, He said. Allah, He said the sin of the past year is gone. I will wipe it off for you. Who are you? He did not say some of the sin. Did He say some? Did He say some? He said the sin, all the sin. Allah. So Allah will forgive the sin of the year before it. All the sin of the year before it. He did not say some of the sins will be forgiven. He said the sin. That's it. It's an open apology for all the sin you have. Allah will wipe your sin out from your book. And it's Allah who knows. Allah is all knowing. Your God is not is not all knowing. We spoke about many times. We told you and we showed you that Allah He said women have a sperm coming from their ribs, and this is cannot be from God all knowing. How how God is all knowing? He said women have a sperm coming from their ribs. Explain to me. Explain to me why you worship Jesus who killed by his creation. Is it a good for you? That's a good point. So you are saying to me, if Jesus was not killed by his creation, he should be God, correct? Yes. Okay, well, that means Jesus in Islam is God because in Islam the creation of Jesus were not able to kill Jesus Do you see how foolish you are? So now you as a Muslim you should worship Jesus as God and spit at Muhammad Your logic yeah, is clear. You no, no, don't don't take it back. You are the one who said that you said if Jesus is God How he can be killed by his creation? I said to you So if he was not able to be killed by his creation, he will be God you said yes Okay, well in Islam the creation mm -hmm. of Jesus were not able to kill him. So Jesus must be God according to Islam you don't speak him in your nose. You are the one who said that. You are the one who everybody heard you. Everybody is laughing. It's you who said to me, How you can worship Jesus? How many times I need to repeat it? Why Muslims are my friend? Let us fast Ashura now. Let us fast Ashura so me, my sin and your sin will be forgiven. What you did, what the sin you think Allah will forgive you? What the sin Allah will forgive to you in the last year if you fast Ashura? Give me that. Give me the list. Like what? You stole candies from the grocery store? What is the sin Allah will forgive you? For the last year, if you do Ashura, Allah should say no to you. This is not a question. You see, no, it's, it's Allah. It, Allah decide already. Allah, He said the sin. It's you who decided that. It's not all the sin. So as long you are the one who made the decision, then you tell me what is the sin will be forgiven. It is Allah to decide. So why? How? You see, you keep saying to me Allah to decide, but Allah, He said the sin, all the sin. He didn't say some of the sin. Did you see there? It says some of the sin. All the I can't even hear you, man. Go on. Let 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 the man of the house call me. Let your mom call me. Do you see how stupid? Don't call me. Don't call me. That's, that's it. That's it. I don't want to waste my time on you. That's it. I can't even hear you properly. It's up to Allah. It's up to Allah. It's up to Allah. Hey, Allah, He said to you, I forgive the sin of the past year. We got that. All the news, uh, fake news, it's up to Allah. Why you are calling me Abdul? Are you going to tell me what is the list of the sin? I will forgive you or not? Jesus worship one God and you worship three Here we go. Here, that. You can't even answer me about your religion. Why you talk about something you don't understand? Jesus worship. Okay, I want to show you. I want to show you something in the Quran. I want to show you something in the Quran. Does the Quran says that those who don't worship Jesus, they are kuffar? Show me, show me this. Hmm. Why your God? Why Jesus worship the Father and you really worship? Well, we believe in the Trinity, the the, the Son, His speech to the Father. Your God, when He worship Muhammad Hijab, mm -hmm. He says, Allah, He pray. Muhammad Hijab, He said, Allah, He pray. Oh. Allah, He pray to who? Jesus, He pray to the Father. You Muslims, your Allah pray to who? To His Father? Huh? Why? Worship answer God. answer Jesus. Uh, Jesus I answered you Jesus he prayed to the father you Muslims your 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 God Allah he prayed to who I just answered you Jesus he prayed to the father so uh, your God Allah what's wrong with you I answered you Jesus he prayed no. to the father we believe in the Trinity we believe in the Trinity Abdul 
You, Did your God, he pray on Muhammad. He pray to who? Go to Ibn Kathir. <laughs> go to Ibn Kathir. Go to Ibn Kathir. What yes. Ibn Kathir would do? You remember last time yes. I showed you Ibn Kathir, you don't accept it? Uh, huh? Ibn Kathir. Okay, hold on. If I show you Ibn Kathir, if I show you Ibn Kathir, are you willing to accept what Ibn Kathir will say, which is going to get your must Muslim busted? Can I answer? Yes, can you answer? Yeah. Are you are, are you going to accept Ibn Kathir? Do you promise me? Yes. Okay. In this verse, Ibn Kathir. Last time, yesterday, Allah, yesterday you told me yes. You remember yesterday you told me yes. If I show you Ibn Kathir, and then when I show it to you, you run away. I when I show all, it to okay. you, when I show it to you about Adam will not, uh, Adam did not forget, you know, you I, I you ran away, you you went to a tabari, you went to a tabari, you remember? So now listen, if I show you from Ibn Kathir, do you swear by Allah, you will not swallow your tongue? I agree, yes. No, swear, Allah, swear by Allah, Allah, swear by Allah that you will not swallow your tongue, and I say, I, huh? I agree. I don't need to swear. Why you do not need to swear? That would make it more fun, you know. Why not? I know. Hmm. Which I verse? Agree. Which what verse you want me? Want? Which verse you want me to show you so we can love together? Can, the verse of sorry. Muhammad hijab. Yes. Okay. All right. So let us see. In, 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 okay. 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 This verse <laughs> no problem. And he say, Allah, <coughs> Allah pray. And the engines, all right, the all right, of Allah okay, okay. Let us see, let us see. Ibn Kathir, let us love together 3356. I would love to you, okay, because Ibn Kathir will get your prophet busted. Abdul, you Muslims, you have you no will, idea, will, okay. Let us see in a few seconds. We will see how that happened. He will explore you, mm, all right, because the Christian missionary he, he always lies, lies, lies after lie after lie, he didn't stop to lie. Yeah, you know, I, I heard the Christian missionary saying Muhammad was a good guy. I agree with you. This guy was working for the devil, obviously. This is Ibn Kathir. Do you see the screen? Do you see Ibn Kathir? Do you see Ibn Kathir? Wait, wait a second. Hmm. Which verse is this? You are the one who told me. You don't even know the verse we are talking about, don't you? I know, just uh, the this screen. I don't see it. Why you don't see it, guys? Is the screen showing? It's showing. Okay, okay. Okay. Hmm. Go to the first verse. What the word? Uh, what the word "salla" mean, according to Ibn Kathir? Go to the first verse. What first to, verse? Okay. What first go verse? Go to up. What what? The uh, verse where he said. What is the first verse you want? What verse? The verse that uh, it's, it's enter now is he's not showing in the page. Here we go. That's I'm looking for it. Let us see. Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Where is the verse? Wa salli Allahu ala Muhammad. Here we go. Wa salli Allahu ala Muhammad. Read no, the, verse, the verse of the Quran. 15, the verse from the Quran. Okay, here we go. The verse from the Quran. Unbelievable. It's chapter thir uh, 33, verse number 56. 56. Here we go. Okay. Read it for me. Read it. Let us laugh. I don't, I don't see it. Which, which? Chapter 33, verse number 56. This is your Muslim translation. I go to text every Kathir, not the, the I was the, there. You told me go to the Quran. What's wrong with you? I was in a big Kathir page. Which one you want? The first, the first page of this. Okay, verse. okay. First of all, read the Quran for me. What it says here in the Quran. Explain to us what's happening. Ibn Kathir in this verse, he see that Allah. Allah he pray praise it is uh, not a uh, prayer praise and the angels praise send, guys Allah he praise what praise mean what what praise mean praise he sends praise okay praise what praise mean what the word praise mean just, just, no no you tell me you tell me first you just told me Allah he praise what the <clears throat> praise mean what does that mean 
praise be. So, so you are saying to us that God he praised a man, not the man he praised the God of Islam. Are you saying to me that the God of Muhammad he praised Muhammad? Okay, are you saying Allah? He, he will I am not saying Muhammad. it's you who say. It. Don't say. Are you? Don't start saying. Are you saying? I am saying it's you who said to me Allah he praised Muhammad. Did you say that or not? Yes. Okay. There is no problem. What do you, what do you mean by Allah praise? Allah what what the word praise? What the word praise mean? What the word what the word the praise mean, my friend? Explain to me what the word when you say Allah praise, Allah praise what? Love. Huh? Love. It is love. Send what? his love. Praise means send his love. Yes. I never heard of this before. Guys, the word praise send send his love. Yes. Okay, so your God and the angels they are sending love to Muhammad. Mwah. Mwah, Muhammad, mwah, we, mwah, Valentine Day. Are you saying that? Are you stupid or what? Well, you are the one who's saying to me that. Uh, is, isn't it you who just said to me, Allah and the angels sent his love? Did Jesus love you? Loves you or don't, don't, don't change the topic. Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> so, the, 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 as you're saying to me, God, he is sending his love to Muhammad. What's the problem with that? Well, the problem that Jesus Muhammad that... became God because if God, if, if God, if God <laughs> praising, if God praising Muhammad, that's mean he is God. That's mean Muhammad is God. No, no, no. Uh, Abdul, who is the one? Do do your God praise you? Yes. Where? Show me. Your God, he praise you. He loves me. He loves you. <laughs> no, this is not that it says you said to me he prays you. It's, which means he loves me because Allah Abdul he Abdul, loves let me. us get you busted. Let us get you busted. Shut up, shut up. Look, it says Allah and his angels. This is the Muslim translation. In Arabic, it says you saloon. What you saloon mean? Give me the word. Be, be, be honest. What the what what the implication is? Are you well, let me ask you: Are you better? Are you better than? Are you better than Ibn Kathir yesterday when you asked me about Adam? Are you better than him? I agree with him. He, he exposed you. You he agree with me, you idiot, and this is why you run away. You refuse to read it. You said to me, "Go to At Tabari." No. You forgot? It is you who stopped the cup. Okay. Do you want? Do you do you want? Do you want me to go there again and force you to read? Go to Ibn Kathir. Know about this verse. Oh, what about the verse yesterday? Okay, here we go. We will go to Ibn Kathir about this verse. Let us love together. Hmm. This is Ibn Kathir about. Hold on. Let us, this, this is Ibn Kathir. Hold on. Okay. This is Ibn Kathir about this verse. Wasallallahu ala Muhammad. Read with me carefully. Read for me. I have I have in my page Ibn Kathir. He say that the action of Allah is different than the actions of the angel. The, uh, the, uh, Salat of Allah is praise, and the Salat of the angels is sending supplications. So the, the, the actions of Allah is different from uh, the actions of angels. So the same word used this for both. Just, the same word used for both. Yes. So you must, if you try to fabricate, what? you say, okay, both of them, they uh -huh. do Salah, but the Salah of the angels yes. are different from the Salah of the, of, of the Quran. Yes. The, does your prophet say yes. that or... Does your prophet says that? No, this is your fabrication. Salah mean a pray. So you just admit it. You just admit it that Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir, he agree that the word Salah means supplication, correct? No, no. It's no. you who said that a second ago. Can I answer? Yeah, Ibn go. Kathir said Salah for Allah. Is is salat for Allah is praising? Okay, okay. Let, let me ask you. Let me ask you. So according to the verse, Allah He did salah on Muhammad. What does that mean? He sent a blessing. According according to Ibn Kathir, He said praise, praise, praise. Okay, and the angels they are asking Allah for what? For supplication. For the what? There is a difference. For what? To do what? Asking Allah supplication. They are asking supplication to send blessings to Muhammad. I mean, look how stupid you guys are. Uh, if Allah already, he praised him. You ask him for more? Is that like a rice? We want more rice, Allah. Allah send more rice, Allah. Allah more sugar. I mean, the God, the, your God, Allah already, he blessed him and he praised him. So what do you mean the angels are asking Allah for more? Are you stupid people? Is your God is God? Or is, is your God is God or he is a vendor? You know, we make a request for more. What more mean? If your God already blessed Muhammad, what more blessing will do? No, no, explain to me. 
if Allah blessed Muhammad already, what more blessing will do? Now you change the question. Why I am not quite question? changing. It's you who said that to me that no. when the angels they pray, it's supplication to Allah to send more. When Allah He pray, He is sending a blessing. That's wonderful. Okay, Allah He sent a blessing already. The angels are asking Allah for more blessing. Why? Why if Jesse didn't say that Allah I am going with Ibn Kathir. I'm going with Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir is being, you know, is getting you busted because you just say that Ibn Kathir says that the word Salah is for both for the angels and for Allah, but the action of Allah is different. Hold on, shut up. You you said you, you said you said you said that they are asking say plenty plenty of Salah upon him on Friday and every Friday. So the, 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 Allah is asking the angels. To send salah upon him on Friday and every Friday. Okay, why the angels they have to make a Friday prayer on Muhammad and every Friday? Why? Because it's a command from God. Okay, so are you saying that the blessing of Allah expired every seven days? So we need to ask Allah for more prayer on Muhammad. Otherwise, the the previous blessing will be expired. Muhammad is dead already. I didn't say that. What what the blessing? What the blessing of a dead man will do? It is benefit for the believers. No, no, it's benefit. It's benefit. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's a benefit for the believer. So you are saying to me by asking Allah for a blessing for Muhammad, you get a benefit, correct? What? What? Your you just said. You just said by praying to Allah to send the blessing on Muhammad, you receive a benefit, correct? Yes, because you, you thank you very much. What Allah commanded. Wonderful, so because you obey God. Allah. Okay, so what now? Now, what we do in order to get blessing for us, we ask Allah for blessing for Muhammad. So Muhammad became the medita meditator, and he is the source of a blessing. In order to get a blessing from no. Allah, we fool Allah. We say Allah, hey, send the blessing to Muhammad, so we can get a blessing too. So you Muslims are a bunch of hypocrites. So you are saying to me, hold on, you are saying to me, you are not doing a, you are not doing a prayer on Muhammad because you like Muhammad, but because you want to get the benefit of the blessing. You use Muhammad, you use Allah. Allah, he said, bless Muhammad so I can, okay, hold on, hold on. You, you just made it clear. Muhammad here is like, is, is used and abused by you. Muhammad, he make you worship him as God. He says to you, okay, if you want to receive a blessing, ask for a blessing for me. This is what you said. Can I answer? Yeah, go ahead. Can I can I explain? Okay. There is if if you want if you want to get blessing, you can ask Allah directly without Muhammad. There's another specific blessing if you if you because Allah command you. If you want, if if you ask Allah hmm. blessing for Muhammad, so you get more rewards. Hmm. But you can get blessing without Muhammad. So okay. don't waste it. Okay, hold on. Let, 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 let's uh, let's go here. In the same page of Ibn Kathir, it says that Allah forbidden Muhammad, he said, Allah forbidden the earth from consume the bodies of the Prophet. Do you agree with Ibn Kathir? Where, where is this? Ibn Kathir, the same page we are reading from. Show, show me. In Allah harrama ala al ard and ta'kula ashzad al anbiya. Do you agree? I don't see it. Wait, wait, uh, some people see it. Why you don't see it? It's a different time, difference in time. Okay, well, I told you to it in Arabic, so you have no choice to say it's not there anyway. You know the hadith. So, do you agree with this? Yes, I agree. All right. So your prophet claimed that even when he is dead, is he dead or is he alive now? Physically he is dead, but spiritually dead. he is alive. Okay. So when Muhammad is dead, why the earth will not eat his body? Isn't it? Is is it, this, uh, isn't it the Quran says? Isn't it the Quran says? Wa alayha fan. Everybody in the top of it is going to be destroyed. So how Muhammad's body is going to be preserved? Because 
Here he didn't say all the prophets. It, it, it depends on the prophet. Okay, so Muhammad, but so Muhammad himself, his body will be preserved, correct? No, he he talked about the this the spiritual body, not physical body. Ah, uh, the spiritual body. Ah, Abdul, it says body. Have you ever heard of a spiritual body? Are you stupid or what? Yes, yes, it says yes. body. As sad, as sad, as sad. You speak Arabic. You you claim you speak Arabic, right? It says a sad, a sad mean physical body, not spiritual. It it can it can be mean also. Uh, it, it, it can be body. no, it can it, it cannot be. It cannot be. Don't play games. It says bodies. So your prophet he claimed that the 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 ground will not consume the the flesh of 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 a prophet. Do you agree with that or not? Is this a hadith or a commentary? This is Ibn Kathir, the page you told me. I don't know. I am. I have no idea. You are the one who told me to go to Ibn Kathir. I have Ibn Kathir in front of me, and you said you accept. You swear you accept whatever he say. So what is the problem with this, my friend? I want an answer. Don't tell me what is the problem. Always when I, when I, when you hold the Muslim from his tail, he starts saying to you, "What's the problem? What is what is that? What's your point?" I am asking you. Do you agree or you don't agree? Do you agree or you don't? I agree about what? Huh? I agree about what? Agree about what? So what I'm repeating for you the question for the for many time. Do you agree that the body of the prophet will not be consumed after death? Yes or no? He, he will be concerned. He will be concerned. So anyone who say the opposite is a liar, right? No, he he can't change his his. Uh, his statement because he he, he, he didn't he, he is not the prophet who see it. It's not what? It's not the prophet who see this. Who who, who see that? Which, which this is not, not the question. Because... This is not the question. You agree that the prophet body is going to be consumed? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay, guys. He said the prophet body will be consumed. So if Muhammad he said. The opposite is a liar. So why you are saying Ibn Kathir, you agree with him. Ibn Kathir is the one saying that. Ibn Kathir is the one saying Kathir, that Allah he forbid the earth to consume the body of the Prophet. Allah forbid the earth to consume the body of the Prophet. He may, he may be is wrong. So okay, he is maybe wrong. Okay. What about your prophet? Is he wrong too? No, the prophet is not wrong. Okay, because the prophet he said the same. Here we go. Now let us see what you will do. You will run away. You said, you said, you see, you are the one who said you accept Ibn Kathir. When we show you something funny about Ibn Kathir, you said I don't accept it. He's wrong. Now what you will say, you will say Muhammad is wrong. This is a hadith and this is sahih. Even Muhammad, he claimed sure. that you have to pray on me. Sub, you see, you Muslim, you say that the word salah does not mean praying to Muhammad. But as you see, it's a proven that this is a prayer you made to Muhammad. Read with me carefully what the hadith is saying. Wait, I don't see it. Wait, it's... This is from Bukhari. <laughs> I don't care from where. Just tell me now. What do you think? Later we will tell you from where. You said this is wrong. Everybody heard you. Are you going to change? You will swallow your tongue again. How you say that we ask Allah? We we send the prayer to Allah, but your prophet saying no. You send the prayer to me. All your prayer will be supplicated to me. Read it. So the prayer you make is not is not for Allah, it's for your God Muhammad. Show me the Arabic one. Show me the Arabic one. How much you pay to show you? I am I am the same like your prophet. The prophet says. If you want to see the prophet in the private, you. if you want to see the prophet in private, you want to speak to him in private, you have to give him arms. How much arms you will give me? Just, just do what you have seen. How much, how much, how much arms you will give me to show you to you in Arabic? I am like Muhammad. I want to do business now. 
What kind of a prophet? He, he, he will not answer you unless you pay him. I will be nice for you this time, but next time I will charge you. Here we go. This is in Arabic. It says, it says, you know, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let me read for you in Arabic because your Arabic is funny, you Moroccan boy. Yeah. <laughs> Translate if you are a man. Be brave. Let us laugh together at, at, at this cult. So what is your what's the problem with that? What the problem? What the problem? You say to me, we supplicate to Allah. The hadith says, no, you don't supplicate to Allah. Or when you say, pray, oh Allah, pray, pray to Muhammad. You are praying to Muhammad. And the prayer will be submitted to Muhammad, not to Allah. So how Muhammad is dead, and here and here, the, and the Muslim ask him, how we will pray, and you, our prayer will be submitted to you, but you will be dead. How how this will happen? Read, read carefully. They said to him, how can our blessing? By the way, this is a false translation. It doesn't say blessing. It says salat. How our salah be submitted to you when your body is decayed, which means because you are dead. He said, uh, Allah has forbid the earth from consuming the body of the prophet. So your prophet claim that all the prayer of you make is going to come to him in the grave and submit it to him. What, what if I... Guys, we might, we might lose electricity. We have a very crazy storm. Oh, boy. There is another hadith that explains this. What is that? If we lose electricity... Abdul, are you going to answer or not? Do you hear the thunder? There is another hadith that explains this. Ah, okay, this God, hadith. just go, go. This other hadith explains this. And then read the other hadith. It's ex guys, a hadith will explain the hadith, they explain the hadith. Give me the hadith. Just send it to me so we can laugh. I will give you 10 hours to send it to me. The man is dead in the grave, and he claimed that your prayer will be submitted to him. And yet you claim, you lie to us, you say, Allah, he pray for, not to. The fact, all the prayer is praying for Muhammad, to Muhammad, for the benefit of Muhammad. All the prayer you do is going to be sent for your God, Muhammad. Let us hope we will not lose electricity. Very strong wind. Actually, I like I like the sound of the wind. Do you hear it? Man, the wind is going crazy. I hope no tree will fail in my in my place. What is that? Wow. Man, the trees is moving like crazy. Oh boy. Anyway, better than having a, an invasion of cockroaches like what happened to Mecca today. You know, at least we don't have cockroaches. Allah protect no one. He can't protect his Muhammad. Muhammad, he died, by the way. The, the, the liar Muhammad, he told them that the body of the prophets will not be consumed, will not be decay uh, when they die. And then the, this is why the Muslim did not bury him for three days after that. And then Ibn Abbas, he said to them, bury your, your, your friend. Fakad Anton, you know, he is stinking. Your friend is stink. Bury him. Three days the Muslim did not bury Muhammad because of this hadith. Because he told them, he lied to them. He said to them that prophets, their body will not be consumed. So they said to themselves, why would we bury him? Even, even, even the, the 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 what they understand from this too. Not only the earth cannot decay, cannot even swallow it. 
so we have to keep it outside it's going to stay as a miracle so the Muslims did not bury him for three days and then his belly became uh, full of fart you see when a, when a person he died and he especially if he ate like before he died the food in his in the stomach the food in the stomach will start making gas and then his belly will 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 uh, will grow and grow and grow and then he start farting so Muhammad he died they did not bury him for three days because of this what he said he said to them don't worry be happy if I die my body will not be decay so you know he's claiming to be like his Jesus he will come back from death hmm? and now we ask him you see, he is the one who said to me, go to Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir, he mentioned the same story. And now he don't like Ibn Kathir no more. Ibn Kathir is wrong. This is the game the Muslims, they play. They jump from place to place to place to place. It's like a zoo. Well done. Okay, guys, we have a, we have a person. He gave us donation, uh, Billy. Well done, uh, $10. Man, if if uh, if well done ten dollars, what if I make it burned? How much is going to be? <laughs> Thank you for those who made donation. Well done, well done, my friend. Everything we do is well done. Everything, and that's why the Muslims they are in chaos. Did you notice how many Muslims left Islam just last month? Isn't it every day an average of two, sometimes even more, leave Islam? I don't even I don't know how many to count and not only that this is not this is this is beside those are life on air this is not the one I did not count those who would send me messages in Skype saying we want to leave Islam so it is not only well done it's beyond well done Islam is very stupid and this is what we arm you with so they cannot lie to you they cannot lie to your kids and they cannot fool you no more Now, who is a Muslim when I when I call us? Somebody he is honest at least for a second. Yeah, sure. I I will post the link. Actually, sometimes the admin. They, and by the way, this is Sahih Hadith. He cannot say this is weak, huh? You know the game. You know Sahih weak, vitamin A, B, D, C. You know they cannot play this game. Uh, but anyway, even this one is Sahih. Uh, I I will not be surprised if a year, a year from now they will say it's weak. All those hadith they were sahih for centuries, and when we start getting them busted, they start saying it's weak, it's weak, it's weak, 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 weak. <laughs> oh boy, don't call Zak and Naik. I cannot call Zak and Naik no more. He get a restriction order from the court and not to call him no more. You know, because he said that uh, you know he's very handsome. Uh, there is a there's a there's one of you. Uh, I don't know if you know the channel of unmasking the fool. He made a video of Zakir Naik. I'm calling him. Go watch it. It's a cartoonic video. It's very funny. Zakir Naik was was singing. I am sexy and I know it. Oh. <laughs> uh, abrogation verses abrogation verses okay hold on you see the Muslims they have something funny just to cover cover the, the madness of uh, of the Quran being corrupt so they say to you there's verses abrogated by recitation but not by practice I mean what is the what is the wisdom of such a thing abrogated by recitation but not by practice as long you will practice it how you can practice something you cannot recite I mean, shouldn't we have the law so we can follow the law? What is the wisdom if the law is still into existence? And you say to me, we abrogate the recitation, but not the practice. Simply, all what happened, they, they do not know the recitation anymore. There is many contradiction. So they decide to leave the recitation and to keep what they are sure from, which is the practice. Otherwise, why you want to say to me, or as an example, this hadith here. The hadith about the goat. Every Muslim he knew that the stoning to death verse was in the Quran. And the 10 time breastfeeding for adult was in the Quran. Okay, and now they say to us, look in this hadith. 
that the 10 time breastfeeding for an adult is abrogated by five time reading but five time breastfeeding where, where we can five where we can find the five time where we can find the verse which abrogate the first verse. So now we cannot find the first verse, which is 10 times breastfeed for adult, and we cannot find the second verse, which abrogating the first verse by five times breastfeed for adult. <laughs> All of this happened because they are trying to explain why we don't have it no more. Simply the answer is there in front of you. The goat ate it. And you know, let us assume that this story, according to Muslims, is true. As long as the goat ate it. Okay, what about the Muslim? They say to us the Quran preserved in their chest. The goat ate the papers, did not eat the chest of the Muslims. So what about you give us the verse? You know what I mean? The goat ate the pages of the Quran. We got that. But did the goat eat Aisha too? Did the goat eat Omar? Did the goat eat Abu Bakr? What is the verse? Let us say, I have a verse that says that Jesus said, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of my father. And a goat ate that verse. But I know the verse. I will write it again. Simply, the story of the goat, obviously, is to cover the ass of the Muslims who they are trying to get rid of it. This is a very humiliating verse. The Prophet ordering Muslim women to give their boobs to strangers. By the way, the coming in new year, Islamic new year, I'm thinking to open a new business. It's called the drive-through boobs, suckling for adult. You can put your name in the side if you like to sponsor our project. It's a charity project, charity for the hungry men. You know, a lot of men they are like like to suckle only from boobs of women. Uh, you, you know, they want to remember the days when they used to be children. Mm. We are very conservative people, my friend. We are very conservative. We force our wife to wear a burqa, but you can suck the nipples of my wife. Praise be to Allah. And by the way, there's no milk. Because those women, they are not even even goats, my friend. They don't have milk always. You have to have a baby. So those women, they are giving their breast to do what? They suckle the nipples only. What they will suck? I want to open a project like this in Las Vegas, but sadly, I don't have the money for that. I will bring some beautiful females, you know, imported halal females. And we have like stamp tattoo, it says halal in their boobs, you know, like next to the nipples, around the nipples. Like we put we put a stamp halal around the nipple, and the and the and the men they drive it through and they start sucking it like mm, halal mm, next. Uh, uh, brother, what is the price for, for for boobs today? Uh, we we will put that in the stock market, you know. You can buy stocks, boob stocks. I mean, this is will explode the whole stock market idea. Imagine we have like a boobs or nipples stock. The nipples stock is going up today. Breastfeed for adult? And you are telling me this guy is a prophet? Well, obviously he is a prophet. I mean, come on. <clears throat> And there is other hadith explain this hadith. Have you ever heard of such a garbage? You have to text me before you can call me, my friend, to avoid the stupid calls. Any Abdul? When Muhammad he ordered the women to give her boobs to a stranger to suck it, uh, the, 
don't you Muslims have like a little brain to think and ask yourself what kind of a prophet he will give us an order? I mean, what is that? Since when, since when, that is a solution for a man not to think in about a woman in a dirty way? I never heard that men they would they will they will stop thinking dirty if a woman she show her breast. That's a that's a magical idea actually. I mean, obviously Muhammad he invented a lot of stuff. And the funny in the story, the woman she said to Muhammad, "How I'm going to breastfeeding and he's a grown man? I I wish at that time there's a camera so we can see how her face looked like." Honestly. Imagine if that time there's live broadcast and, and Muhammad he just said to the woman give him your boobs suckle him the women like her eyes will be like what huh huh what how, how I'm going to suckle him how I can suckle him and he is a growing up man isn't it obvious that your prophet is making fun of you Actually, this is the only way, the only thing I like about Islam, to be honest with you. Sometimes I feel like I want to be Muslim right now, right here. Allah. Allah. Okay, Allah. Uh, what condition between me and you? Agreement. If I convert to Islam, how many suckering I can do a day? Hmm? I will go to a Muslim country. And I will put a sign. It says, Allah promised me your suckling. And by the way, they are conservative women. They will not shake hands with me. I can only shake their boobs and suckle their boobs. We have to be honest here. Very conservative society. Be careful. Don't break the Sharia law, brother. You cannot shake hands with them. You can shake their boobs. Come on. Any Muslim? Look like somebody trying to call me. Let's see what is that. <coughs> this guy is saying to me, son of Muta. A Muslim saying to me, son of Muta. <coughs> answer, answer. No, you love how you love Muhammad Rasulullah. What is that? <laughs> Do it again, do it again, and we will give you two, two, uh, two boobs from Mecca. Go ahead. What is that? Why you hang up? Say it, say it again. What is that? Why you hang up? Coward. Potato. Let us see someone else. We block this guy as long as he's a coward. He don't want to talk. An ex Muslim. Okay, tomorrow debate with Facebook. I will call him. Okay, guys, remember tomorrow, tomorrow we have a guy from Nigeria. His name is Ustaz Jamiu Abaganau. If I'm saying his name correctly, Ustaz in Arabic means uh, uh, master. Supposed he claimed to be a master. So tomorrow we have a, a brother. He will call this guy. Uh, And uh, he will connect me with him, so we will have some fun. Let us see what happen. So tomorrow he will call him at 4 p.m. New York time. I will be earlier for sure, before he call. Uh, uh, somebody sent me messages. Say suck a breast. They are salty. Look like you're an expert, my friend. I have no idea if they are salt. Are they salty? <laughs> okay. Let us see. Hmm. 
Evet. Az da expert. Sure, Muhammad he knew a lot about this. Okay. Any Muslim here would like to call us? May they, may they. Anyone? If there is AC, I can call CP. I don't know what AC I mean. Any Muslim would like to call? Muhammad Mustafa is busy now. He is doing suckling. There's an Egyptian uh, TV host. She was talking to the sheikh about this. He said to her, yeah, you have to do it. So she said, are you saying to me that all those men who work with me in the studio, they have to suck my boobs? He said, yes. She said, do you know how many they work here? <laughs> oh, boy. And the other woman, she asked, what if I'm going in the train? Are you saying to me everybody in the train or airplane have to suck my boobs because before I can stay with them alone? He said, yes. That's, that's amazing. I mean, this is a very fancy religion, man. I mean, why you guys are saying, why you are saying Islam is a very uh, aggressive? It, uh, this is Muta, you can rent a woman in the elevator for sex. You give her $10 to take off her panty. If she is wearing panty. You know, if, if she is wearing panty. Usually they don't. You know, they speak too much about being conservative, but I never saw something conservative in Islam. This is why a Muslim man, by the way, he marry you if he speak to you over, over Skype. Twice, the third time, he don't mean he don't care even to marry you because for them there's no marriage. It's just a contract for sex. Marriage for them is very easy. Because this is why divorce is so easy too, because there's no marriage. This is just a contract sex. Halal, do it, do it halal. All the marriage for them is a muta, is a joy for sex. So you wanna, okay, you you like her, you, should, you will see it after two days, especially if you need papers. You know, if you need papers after two minutes, he will ask you to marry him. But if you need, he do not need papers. If you need papers, even if you are 60 years old and he is 20 years old, he will marry you. You know? But if you do not, if you do not need papers, he don't mind. I mean, even if you are not really good looking, he will marry you for a week or two or, or a month, you know. Uh, Especially if you have a place to stay, you don't pay rent or etc. It's very easy. They will ask you to marry. Marry me? Okay, we we'll marry. Get married. Go to the mosque. Let's go to the mosque. You go to the mosque. You say in the sheikh, I'm going to F her. He say to you, do you like to F him? You say yes. Here we go. You are wife and husband now. And then after a few weeks, he will send you a text message. He says to you, you are, you are divorced. They are not even, they don't even have to go and say it to you face to face no more. They can send it to you by text message. It's approved now by Islamic uh, uh, scholars to divorce your wife by text message. <clears throat> Do we have any Abdul? No, the idea of marrying many women. Because simply women is just as for the joy of sex. If you love a woman, you stay with one woman. What's the point of having many? Unless you are just having a sex uh, party. Uh, you know, the Muslim, they speak about, like, some people, they have a, a threesome. Threesome, right? Well, Muslim, they have five some. Four wives and one man. Muhammad actually he used to sleep with all his wives in less than 20 minutes supposedly according to Muslims let me show you the hadith
Let's see. Please be careful in love. We have a hero here. We have a hero who can do bang bang to all his wife. By the way, here in the translation, it says in one hour. But the fact, it doesn't say that. Uh, uh, sa, sa in Arabic, in the time of Muhammad. Now the word sa uh, is equal to one hour, 60 minutes. But at their time, when you say sa, it's between 15 to 20 minutes. So look what it says. The prophet, and here look at the uh, look how they they they, they saying. He says they used to visit all his wives in in around during the day and the night, and they were eleven. That's this is not what it says. He do he do have sex with them. This is why after that it says how he can do that. They said he was given the power of thirty men. Power of what? Of sex. You know what I mean? This is not about he go around to visit them. He go around to F them in one hour, which is equal to 15 to 20 minutes. Sa in Arabic at that time is equal to 20 minute maximum. So the prophet, he used to go around and he F all his wives in less than 20 minutes. In order to do that, they have to be in one room. Because if they are in, let us say here, he's saying they are they are eleven women at that time. So if you want to go around, and they are twenty minutes, well, if you if you take uh, a two minute just to move between a house and a house or a room and a room, then that will be not will not be enough. Twenty minutes is gone. The only way to have such a sex party is to have a party to have eleven women in the bedroom, and Muhammad is having sex with them one after one. All right. Well, uh, <clears throat> somebody sent me. Oh, okay. Oh, somebody sent me a link here. Somebody he made uh, this channel. Let us help uh, subscribe to this channel. Then. Uh, oh, this guy he have a lot of videos, a lot of a graphic. Look like he's very good in graphic. Let me post the link for you guys. You can subscribe to his videos, and they are funny. He used my videos to make, uh, like, you know, to make a point. But where is the video of uh, Zach and Naik singing? I don't know. Zach and Naik. I think maybe this one. Yeah, here we go. Zachary Naik is sexy and he know it. <laughs> Actually, I saw this movie. I was dying laughing. <laughs> Guys, search for the video. Sexy and he know it. Zachary Naik, sexy and he know it. Do you see the video title? Uh, honestly, this, this guy is very good. Because he is very good in graphic, I don't know how he did it. I don't know what he, what software he's using, but uh, you know, it's really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sexy, and he know it. <clears throat> Let us see. Don't call me kid. Oh, he's playing music. Yeah, that's why I will not play it here because there's a music. I don't know if the music. Uh, you can you can copy the link. Here we go. I will copy the link, and I will share it with you. You can subscribe to his channel. All right, guys, this is a very funny video. Go watch it and have fun before you sleep. I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. And tomorrow we are going to have supposedly a debate with the, with the guy. He's called himself Ustaz. 
Sheikh, uh, whatever his name, and from Nigeria. So let us see what will happen tomorrow. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be fun. So we will open maybe an hour before the the debate. I don't want to call it debate. I mean, this guy obviously do not know anything. He claimed to be a sheikh. Hold on, let me show you his picture. Let me see how this guy. Who is this guy? I will search his name. Um, maybe we can find his name in YouTube. As long as he claimed that he is teaching. Don't call me Abdul. I'm done for today. That's it. Enough kids. Ustaz, no. Oh, we did not copy the name. We have to log in Skype again. Anyway, tomorrow we will show you. We will show you his uh, because he do live broadcast in YouTube, uh, in Facebook actually. Yeah. Well, watch this video. Sound like uh, it's uh, you know it's very funny. It's a comedy, and uh, give it a like and subscribe to this guy. This guy he have one hundred eight subscriber only. But he's doing a lot of work. Actually, he de he deserves more of our support, right? You remember we say that when you see something, someone doing good work, uh, we right away subscribe. Like you do not need somebody to invite you to do good. He is imagine to make this video. Actually, I wonder how much time it took him. It's eight minute video, but I am sure it took him a lot of time. I don't know how many hours to to uh, it took him to finish this video. So he he spent maybe ten hours to finish it. Because he made a graphic and cartoon, and then he got 108 uh, subscriber only. I mean, you see, we, we are not supporting the ones who who do the work. You know what I mean, why we don't? Why the Muslim when they when they make something or right away a Muslim when he see a Muslim video right away he subscribe right away he give a like right away. We don't support each other. Like here we go, this poor guy giving all his time and doing all this work and 108 subscriber if you do not work in a graphic before if you do not know how long it takes how much work of time it's a lot i made a cartoon about muhammad it took us more than six months to finish an eight minute or ten minute cartoon six months you know so <clears throat> Anyway, guys, uh, I want to say uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, who cares if uh, YouTube promote or not. My friend, you promote it. Now, you learned about it. You see it. You promote it. Are you going to wait for YouTube? What YouTube? YouTube, they promote Islam. They don't promote anything good. They are liberals. As simple as that. Anything you do, they say to you, you're offending Abdul. So what we can do? You cannot offend them. You can offend the Christianity. You can offend anyone, but you cannot offend the Abdul. They are potatoes. All right? So watch the video. Share it with your friends and love. And with this, we say thank you guys for being here. We are done for today. May the Lord bless you. And I will see you tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow we have a debate, as we said. If we can call it a debate, a guy, he claimed that he's a big shot and he is teaching the Abdul in Nigeria. Let us see how long he can function with us before he flip and have heart attack. And I don't think even I will understand what he's saying. Uh, but we will see. Uh, as long as we have the gentleman who will translate between us, suppose he speaks English, but I'm not sure if I can understand what he's saying. But we will see anyway. Uh, thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you. Uh, they expose the lies of Muhammad and uh, learn how to be tough on this cult. And tough mean to be bold, to say it as it is, not as they want, not politically correct. Being politically, politically correct is an illness, is a weakness. If somebody is hiding something, they've been forced to say something. So if you are a Christian, say things as it is.
Yes, we love the Muslims. It doesn't mean we will let the Muslims die and go to hell. Loving the Muslims is saving the Muslims. It's not the opposite. So when somebody, he says to you, uh, that you are speaking your root, this is not how a Christian should be speaking. A true Christian is the one who say things as it is, and that will make it truth for sure.